Cowboys' six and two record has been achieved despite some key injuries. Backup quarterback Steve Pelour stepped in and kept the NFC's number one offense rolling, along with wide receiver Mike Sherrard. Today, this explosive offense will be bolstered as Herschel Walker welcomes the return of his dream backfield mate Tony Dorsett. York Giants acquire a certain look when they prepare for a game with Dallas. Call it intensity, call it hate, and today call it revenge for a loss earlier in the season the Giants know they gave away. In that game, however, the Giants lack something they have today. Joe Morris back in all pro form. Joe Gibbs and the Redskins will be doing some scoreboard watching today because the fate of the NFC East race just might be a little clearer after this war between the Cowboys and the Giants. CBS Sports presents the National Football League, and today it's the Dallas Cowboys against the New York Giants, and we're live at Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The temperature is 61 degrees. Wind could be a factor. Northwest 12 miles an hour, possible rain and windy in the forecast. Those are the standings in the NFC East. Dallas, the Giants, and the Redskins all at 6-2. and two. This indeed is a big one. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. You know, much has been made about the fact that this is the second meeting between these two teams. Dallas won the first one on opening Monday night. But as you talk to the coaches and players, they say nothing doing to that. These are two totally different teams. With me, of course, is John Madden, as usual, and thankfully. And John, how do you think Dallas plans to attack and approach this game? Well, you know what they'd like to get going is their WD-40 offense. In other words, they'd like to get now that they have Tony Dorsett back, they'd like to get the ball in the hands of Walker and Dorsett 40 times. Now, they realize that the best defense against a run in the NFL is the Giants. So they're not going to be able to hand it to those guys and do a lot of running. They just want to do enough running to keep them honest, but they want to get the ball in the passing game to those guys, get them in the open field, and let them run from there. And as John, as I, John and I talked earlier in the week to Bill Parcells, the Giant coach, he has some definite ideas about how to attack Dallas. Well, the first thing that he talks about and the thing that he wants to do is test that running game. And that's the thing that the Giants do best on offense with Joe Morris. He said that the Dallas Cowboys are 26th in the league against the run. He says we have to find out if that's true. Now, if we can get the ball to Morris, if we can run well early, then we can get them up tight, then we can go to some play passes and some other things later. The other thing he says on defense, he said they have Walker, they have Dorsett, Tony Hill, guys running all over the field. He said, but when we've had success against them, he said the thing that we have to do is put pressure today on Danny White. Well, the Giants have won the toss, elected to receive. Dallas will kick off, and the wind definitely will be a factor. It's at the back of the Cowboys, and Raphael Septian set to kick it off. And because of the severity of the wind, he had to have a holder to keep it on the tee. Phil McConkie and Mark Collins back deep. And McConkie watches Septian's kickoff sail deep and almost out of the end zone. That's going to be a problem. That win. Here comes giant quarterback Phil Sims in the offensive unit. Here's the defense he'll be facing. The front four. Familiar names. Jones, Dutton, White, and Jeffcoat. And the linebackers. As a group, Tom Landry says they're playing better and better. Hegman, Lockhart in the middle, and Jeff Rohr. And the secondary. Walls, Fellows, Bill Bates is back. And Michael Downs. Two tight ends. Moat and Ramar. That's the way the Giants will open. Morris around the corner. Nothing doing. He might have lost the yard as John Dutton and Mike Hegman were the first two Cowboys there. The Giant backs and receivers. Sims the quarterback. Morris and Maurice Carthen. The runners. Solomon Miller and Bobby Johnson start at wide receivers. Up front, Ben Sennard, Oates, Godfrey Nelson, and the tight end Mark Bavaro. And right now, Bavaro is about as good as there is. Second and ten. The two tight ends on the right side this time. Straight ahead is Carthon. Downs. A gain of eight. You know, 
Skip, as you were saying last week, last Monday night against the Redskins, the the Giants did a lot of this two tight ends. And when we watched the tapes of the game, we watched Mark Bavaro block, and I think that was the biggest success of that. I think Bavaro last Monday night gave the best demonstration of blocking by a tight end that I've ever seen. Interesting that he sent a message to us through your son saying you guys are talking about me too much. I don't like that. Morris needs to and he's close. Jim Jeffcoat, the cowboy who made the tackle. It's going to be close. And from the early indication I don't think he got it. Well too tall Jones is running off the field. That's a pretty good indication. Yeah, he's a 12 year veteran. He's been in a lot of short yardage situations and old too tall was the first guy off. And so Sean Landetta number five will come on second in the NFC averaging forty four point seven Gordon Banks is number eighty seven back deep for the Cowboys and Landetta is kicking into a tough win. That's a good kick. Banks just inside his own twenty. Around the corner is Banks and gets back out to about the forty. Pepper Johnson down to make the stop a 51 yard punt against the wind by Landetta a 19 yard return quarterback the other number 11 Danny White starts and he'll be looking at this defense the front three Martin Bird and Marshall and the dominating part of the giant defense banks reasons Carson and Taylor the four leading tacklers and in the secondary rookie Mark Collins Perry Williams on the corners Kenny Hill and Terry Kennard are the safeties. Set and Newsom are the starting running backs. Mike Renfro is wide to the right. That's Doug Cosby in motion. White drops the ball on the first play. And all he can do is just cover it and hope. Be an interesting match between Rafferty and Burt, the two number 64s. White, Dorset, Newsom, Tony Hill, and Mike Renfro, the wide receivers. Two a day, Titan, sir. Rafferty Crawford Kerr Phil Posderick the right tackle and Doug Cosby the tight end. It'll be second and 12 Dorset. Walker is also in the game. Walker is in the slot to the right. So it's Newsom and Dorset deep. That's Walker in motion. Pitches back to Dorset it almost got lost. Cut down by Carl Banks is Tony Dorset a loss of one. It is tough to run against this defense. Well, you know, it looked like that pitch. Watch this pitch. It looked like he kind of got caught in the wind. Looked like the wind did something to it. Look at it back there. It almost hit Newsom in the back. And Dorsett had to come off that. And as you say, you're not going to make a living running against this giant defense. You're not going to make much, period, let alone a living. Third and 13. Newsom and Walker are lined up back with White out of the shotgun. Flag is down as White goes deep for Tony Hill. Just put it up. White was knocked down by George Martin. Let's see what the penalty might be. Against the Cowboys. Sure that that's one the Giants will turn down because we're third down. They'll make the Cowboys kick here. Dick Hantack is the referee. Illegal motion. Offense number 80. Penalty declined. Fourth down. So Mike Saxon will come on for Dallas to put it. Weather has changed considerably since oh an hour ago even John. It was sort of humid earlier. Now it's cooled off and the wind has really picked up. And the wind it looks like it's going on top of the stadium. It goes on one direction and down on the field it goes in another direction. Saxon back to punt. He's been having a good year. That one is going to behave in a rather strange way. McConkey sights it in. It comes up with a catch and it's down immediately. Garth Jacks, number 53, the first man down. 47 yard punt and no return. It's going to be tough handling those. Howdy. <laughs> Give me a light. 
Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. A Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. Ask for Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Buy your friend a beer. <laughs> Here he comes now. See anything suspicious? I don't know. Keep staring at his cigar like there's something different about it. I'll bet it's the wrapper. Huh? Yeah, most cigars don't use natural leaf wrappers anymore. Now, gosh, your Vegas still gives you the rich tobacco taste of natural leaf wrappers. He's still staring at it. Hey, Jimmy, go on over and give him an honest cigar. <laughs> Gosh, your Vega, still an honest cigar. He's doing it again. You always hurt the one you love. People have a love-hate relationship with their cars. They love them, but they don't always treat them right. Yet amazingly, over 90% of all Subarus registered since 1974 are still on the road. Now imagine how much longer they would last if people didn't love them so much. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay. Fortunes have been different for these two teams in the first quarter. Six points for the Giants in the first quarter. Third fewest in the NFL. For the Cowboys, they have allowed only three points in the first quarter. So in other words, this first quarter is going to be like a chess match where no one makes a mistake. They just kind of sit there and stare at the pawns. We might as well just fast forward to the second quarter. <laughs> right. right. Come on, let's get through this first quarter and get some action here, guys. Phil Sims, the quarterback. The Giants will start at their own 17. They go with two tight ends again. Morris looking for room. Gets a little bit. Maybe three before Walls and Downs come up. Call it four. Pittsburgh leading Green Bay 3-0. Joe Morris, who had such an outstanding light night last Monday, fourth in the NFL in rushing. You know, Joe Morris has that one thing going for him that we were talking about the other day to Bill Parcells. He said that he, as he looks at things, he's going full speed. He doesn't have to come under control to see. He can run full speed and see. Not many runners can do that. That's McConkey in motion and sends back to throw. Has time. Incomplete. Very nearly intercepted down the middle. Mike Heckman almost came with it. Eugene Lockhart was also close. I'll tell you, and that's not the first thing the Giants want to see Sims do. I think that. You know, Phil Sims has had some problems with interception, has a little, you know, problem with that passing game consistency, and you hate to throw that first one to the guy in the blue jersey. In fairness to him, he's been working almost every week with a different set of wide receivers. Third and six. Bobby Johnson wide to the left. As McConkey in motion. Out of the sprint. Sims up the middle. Bavaro. And he has it. At midfield is Mark Bavaro. Him down, but it's a gain of 30. Yeah, I tell you, that's a great thing about a Bavaro. You know, he not only does that blocking, he not only does those that short possession type stuff, but he can also get deep. And you know, you, you talk about a guy being big, you, you can catch in a crowd with that type of body. You know, that big strong thing, because guys around you don't bother you. They kind of bounce off you. He is really, as you said before, Monday night he put on a clinic and how to how to block as a tight end. Now it's Mo out in motion, seems going to work again. Outside Morris incomplete. Zeke Moat really broke clear. Watch your blocking in here on Randy White. You know, anytime number 54 is in there, he usually draws a couple of them. But those couple do pretty well. That was Bart Oates, the center, and Billy Ard, the left guard. But that combination of the left guard and center are usually assigned to Randy White. It has to be frustrating in many ways to him. 
Second down and 10 at midfield. Sims back to throw. Looking quickly, and Bavaro, again the intended receiver, incomplete. He thought he was hit before the ball arrived. Bill Bates. Well, he knows who to complain to, too. I'll tell you, watch number 40, Bates come in. Comes in. Does he get there before the ball gets there? If it's before the ball, then it would be pass interference. It's at the same time of the ball, it's legal. Now those are two tough guys there, number 40 in blue oh and 89 in white. Well, yeah, that's a nice little collision. That could be a tough meeting. Well, you know, that registered 82. Third and 10. Sims out of the spread. McConkey in motion. Sims a little heat on him this time. McConkey is the receiver. That's close enough. In fact, they'll move the sticks if there's no flag. Yeah, I don't care. You need to fill McConkey's on your team. You know, they the Giants waved him early, went to Green Bay, and then he came back in the middle of the season. But I think this guy gives you life. You know, maybe he's not the greatest player, but he's one of those competitors. You know, he's out there, he gives you special teams, kick returns, big third down plays. I think he should always be your 45th guy, no matter what happens. Well, he keeps coming up with big plays week after week. He may not look that impressive, but when they move the chains, when you need it, he's usually there. Sims going to work again. Up the middle, pass incomplete. It was Bavaro who juggled. And now it's an interception. Did the ball stay in the air? Obviously it did. Or the celebration wouldn't be there. I think it did. I think as Bavaro dropped it, his hands were coming up, and he just dropped it up in the air. Instead of dropping it down, he dropped it up. I'm sure that this is one they'll look at instant replay on, but Bavaro's number 89. I see he started to bobble the ball. It never did touch the ground. Sure you didn't. see it hit, uh, it hit the linebacker there. It hit Jeff Rohr. Watch Rohr is on the bottom there. See the ball hits Jeff Rohr in the back, comes off him, never does hit the ground. And Downs comes up with it. Legal interception. The Cowboys take over at their own 44, first and 10. With that wind at their back. Second possession for Dallas. Dorsett and Newsom behind Danny White. Outside, Tony Hill. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Harry Williams. The Saints leading the 49ers in the first. Atlanta over New England in the first. And Pittsburgh 10-0 over Green Bay. Detroit over the Bengals. All of those in the first quarter. Two tight ends now for the Cowboys. Excuse me, John. You know, Pat, in that Atlanta game, Nick Luckers wasn't even expected to play. He came out of the locker room, kicked the field goal. Like the super, you know, out of the uh, phone booth. Come out of the locker room, boom, kicked the threer. Second and ten. They start with a full house backfield. Dorsett moves in motion. And off is to Herschel Walker. And Walker rambles and hammers inside giant territory. Kenny Hill finally made the stop. A gain of seven. That would illustrate that this should be a pretty good contest. Well, that, I mean, you see that the Cowboys are first or second in everything on offense, and the Giants are first or second on everything on defense. It also means that there may not be much uh, scoring going on. The defense wins. 8.02, eight minutes now left in the first quarter. No score. Walker is out. It's Dorsett and Newsom now. Tony Hill lines up as the tight end on the left side. And now White backs away. Timeout. Seven forty-nine left to play in the first quarter at Giants Stadium. Nothing, nothing. In this match for first place. An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. 
months ago. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and developed unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, let's close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. Experience an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness, Atra Plus. The Plus is the white Luber Smooth strip that releases lubricants as you shave. You never felt anything smoother. Atra Plus by Gillette, the essence of shaving. Who has the easy to load, easy to shoot, easy to enjoy camcorder? Who? RCA. It's the new Pro Wonder camcorder. If you settle for less than RCA, that's exactly what you'll get. Sometimes breaks can give you a gentle hint that they need a little work. Whoops. Take it to Midas. Over four million people have trusted their breaks to Midas. Good price, good guarantee. We won't break you. Whoops. Take it to Midas. Whoops. Huh? Take it to someone you trust. Summerall, John Madden, you look at that new emblem in the middle of the field, the New Jersey Meadowlands. This is the 10th anniversary of this stadium. And I don't think, John, uh, as we go around the NFL, there's a better vantage point for us or the fans than here. I, tell you, I think this would be the top stadium in the NFL if they only had grass down there. But I think they wanted to get New Jersey. You know, they have two teams in New York, the Jets and the Giants, and neither of them play in New York. They both play here in New Jersey, but they're always called a New York team. I think they fear if we put it right in the middle of the field, every time you watch a game, you're going to be reminded you gotta it's in New Jersey. It. Yeah. You got to see it. Third down and a long three. Jimmy Newsom out of the backfield got the first down a gain of eight the pass from Danny White Andy Hedden made the stop. You know it's one of the things Bill Parcells was saying you know you hear all about Dorsett and Walker he said but the guy who makes a lot of big plays for this team is Timmy Newsom. That's the 31st pass that he's caught this year. So you always worry about all the other guys and he said this guy can really hurt you. Before this game started Herschel Walker and Newsom had Caught a total of what, 70 passes? Yeah, Walker has 40 and Newsom had 30. And now, Sherrard is a. Danny White did well to get rid of it. Flags are down everywhere. Herschel Walker was the intended receiver. Harry Carson all over him. They're going to call that on Harry Carson. I think that he tackled Herschel Walker before the ball got there. did well to find and guard Herschel Walker. Holding defense, number 53, first down. That's this. We'll see Herschel Walker coming in motion. You see, he's going all the way against the flow. He comes out there, and you see right there, Harry Carson had him, grabbed him, spun him around, and threw him to the turf. Mark Collins, the rookie cornerback for the Giants, was right in Danny White's face as he let it go. See, here's what it looks like here. Watch. We see him, Mark Collins, coming from the outside. You don't see that much with that corner covering the wide receiver blitzes. First down, Cowboys at the Giant 36. And off to Dorset. Into the giant secondary, gets down close to a first down before Kenny Hill brings him down. Gain of nine. You know, one of the things that Newsom does besides catch passes, he's the guy in the backfield that's going to block. Watch him here, number 30, blocking on Lawrence Taylor. He does a good job. See, he gets Taylor, stops him, straightens him up, and that gave. Dorsett time to cut off that block. Newsom is just about as big as Lawrence Taylor. Second and one. They're at the Giant 27. Hand off 
doorstep. He slips, gets up. He might have enough for a first. Jim Burke was the first giant there. See how the Cowboys tried to block Burke? They brought Newsom in motion. And Newsom was sneaking in there, sneaking in there. Let's see if we can see it. You know, those nose tackles, watch him here. He'll come in here, sneak, 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 and then boom, have to take on this. Burt plays it pretty well. Watch Newsom. See how he tries to hide in there? Quack. Takes on Burt. And then Burt just slides right down the line and makes the tackle. Those nose tackles don't know where the heck they're getting blocked. They get them everywhere. 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 First and 10, Dorsett got enough to the giant 26. That's Renfro moving. White gives to Dorsett again, and Dorsett gets inside the 25, and a flag goes down. Harry Carson made the stop. While we wait for the penalty, let's check out our scoreboard. The Saints, 14-0 over San Francisco. Holding against Dallas. Tampa Bay leads Buffalo 3-0. The Browns over the Colts. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 75. Five. Repeat the first down. Phil Paz Derrick. 6'9, 290. And that's one problem that Paz Derrick has had over his career is that holding deal. He's played both left tackle and right tackle, and he's a better right tackle. In fact, uh, Tom Landry about a month ago says, Give me my biggest tackles. So they gave him two and A and Paz Derrick. But one of the problems Paz Derrick has had is that holding. I played golf behind Paz Derrick last year in May, and you couldn't even see the golf course. White back on Blitz is coming, and the ball is loose. And the Giants have it. White was hammered by Bird, and he got up with a little tingle. Banks was the man who made the hit. Burt came up with the ball. Well, Carl Banks is coming seat right in his face. He hits him square. The ball pops out. Jim Burt jumps on it. I don't know who you blame on that because no one blocked Carl Banks. I mean, you give a shot like that where that guy comes straight at you and no one blocks him. You have to have the doctor check you after a play like that. It's his right hand, right wrist. We might be seeing Steve Pelour very quickly. First down, Giants at their own 42. Morris goes straight ahead and gets good yardage. Six yards, that's Danny White. Back of his right hand and right wrist, it looks as if that's where the problem is. That's Pelour. Sure that that's one thing. In the meantime, Jim Jeffcoat has just come out of the Cowboy lineup. And Kevin Brooks has taken his place. Straight ahead is Maurice Carthon. They needed four, and he's just a little bit shy. As they start shoving each other around a bit. Oates and Eugene Lockhart. And they're trying to get them unglued. You know, the Giants were so excited about playing the Cowboys this week that this week in practice they had four fights. And Jim Burt was in most of them. Well, they had to take Jim Burt off the field and cool him off. Bill Parcells was probably in a couple of them. <laughs> but these teams really don't like each other. Oh, yeah. It'll be third and one. Series record. They've been playing since 1960. Cowboys lead it 33-13 and 2. Danny White leaving, I'm sure, going for X-rays. Moat goes in motion. And a handoff is to Morris, and he is off and around and out of bounds after a giant first down. Everson Wall saved the touchdown. Joe Morris does that run, that play, where you start just dive straight into the line. Then you just pick a hole. There was nothing inside, and boom, you just bounce it to the outside and take it up the field. Morris I, set up that block by Moab. I don't think there's anyone else that runs that play. That you know, they, I mean, it's just that old straight-ahead dive and let him pick anything to that side. 
He got 15, and the Giants are inside the Cowboy 35. About the 34, Sims going to work in the air. Almost picked off by Jeff Roar. It was intended for Bavaro, and Sims was lucky. Well, you know what happened? Sims was looking at Bavaro, and he saw Bill Bates on him. Bavaro beats Bates, but he didn't look where he was throwing, and that's where Jeff Roar was. That'll bring up a second and ten situation. 3.44 left in the first quarter. No points on the board as yet. Vince Warren is split wide to the left. Solomon Miller is to the right and motion now. Otis Anderson is in the game with Joe Morris. And Morris would be again off to the races. Chased by Fellows and knocked down inside the ten at about the seven. play that's going to go to the right. It's that lit, little quick delay. It starts to the right. He makes a good hole in there. Then he cuts it back against the grain to the left. I'll tell you right now, I think that Joe Morris is running better than any running back in the NFL. What did Bill Parcell say to us that they had averaged on that play? Over seven yards a carry. But that's their best play. Sims. Down the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Bobby Johnson. Ron Fellows on the coverage. I know those fans are going, ooh, they're saying, look, if Joe Morris runs that well for that many plays and you get down there on the seven yard line and it's first down, why don't you give it to him again? They said, no, we, we, we'd rather throw it in here to Bobby Johnson. Although, that's a good throw. You've got to catch those in the end zone. Morris and Otis Anderson. Morris hammers inside the five to about the four. Ed Jones brought him down. That's the seventh carry for Morris. Before that, he was averaging nine yards a pop. Hey, I'm surprised they put Otis Anderson in there. They put him in the I formation and used him as a blocker. You would expect Maurice Carthon would be in there because he has that blocking reputation. I would think so, especially down here in this short yardage situation. It is Anderson. Sims looks, and down he goes in the arms of John Dutton. And they'll have to settle for three. This won't be easy, no matter how close it is. Yeah, we have to look now and see what Phil Sims saw. We'll take it back and wait until he's ready to set up. See, he's ready. He's looking left here. This is what he's looking for. He has double coverage, so he has to get out of that. And then he came back. He didn't have anything to throw to. 25 yards out. Rutledge holding for Raul Allegri. They talked about a possible field goal fake here. quarter and the Giants break on top three nothing it's your money son but if you want my advice buy another Subaru sure dad <laughs> thought we agreed you'd buy a Subaru but dad I did. The Subaru XT, the Sport Magazine Super Bowl MVP award. If you just ask for a light beer, you, like. you never know what you'll get. Bud. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Yours? No. That's everything else. Give me a light. Showtime. It's just a light. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. 
That's why there's Kestrel, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Kestrel before your engine does something to get you heated up. Kestrel, engineered for today's smaller cars. North Carolina takes on a Clemson team with players who believe in razzle-dazzle and fans who believe in razzmatazz or see Stanford beat UCLA next Saturday on CBS Sports. The New York Marathon is over. The winners, Johnny Poli for the men and Greta White for the women. The eighth time, by the way, she has won the New York Marathon. Steve Pallure. Danny White has gone to the locker room, presumably for x-rays, and Pallure will take over at quarterback when the Cowboys get the ball. Robert Levette and Daryl Clack back deep as the kickoff slides past Levette. He has to feel it inside of his own five, and what a good bounce. Greg Lasker was the first man down. Kickoff looked funny, but it certainly came out with a good result. Well, I think Levette was thinking it was going to go out of bounds. Of course, if it doesn't, it's a five yard penalty. He waited for it to go out, waited for it to go out, and it didn't go out. So Pelour comes on in a tough situation. Dallas ball, first and ten at their own six. Giants leading 3 nothing on the field goal by Allegre. I'll tell you one thing about Steve Pelour. This team has a lot of confidence in him. Here is the full house backfield, or it was, until they went into their dance. And now Walker is the deep back. Dorsett is the man in motion. And off Herschel Walker. And he gets to about the seven, and he is really upended there by Leonard Marshall. A gain of two for Herschel Walker. Hey, Leonard Marshall started out at that right defensive end. Once a team's coming off that goal line, it's like short yardage, and you expect they're going to run inside, and Big Leonard just took a pinch move and just flew into that middle. And when you get 290 pounds flying anyway, you're going to have a collision. And the first thing we saw were Walker's feet, second and eight. The ball's at the seven. 140 left to play in the first quarter. Giants up 3 nothing. To Walker again. Walker to about the nine in the arms of Jim Burke. Two more. We're at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford. Threat of rain, very windy, gusty wind, tricky. And the Giants on a field goal of 25 yards by Raul Allegri leads. The Giants lead 3 0. That's what happened. White was hit by Banks, fumbled. Burt recovered, and the Giants took it down and got the field goal. Third down and six. Malure operating out of the spread. Giants showing blitz. Back off a little bit. Now the flags are down. Malure goes up in the air, up with the top. Walker comes down with it. Herschel Walker. If they don't get him down, they're not going to catch him. He lost the ball, and the Giants have it. But there's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. It may be all for naught. This is going to be an interesting one, but the flag, I'm sure, is against the Cowboys. The left tackle, Mark Tuane, moved before the ball was snapped. Do you decline it? Well, it was third down. I would think that they would decline it because they're going to get the ball at about the 38-yard line. I don't think they'd get it much better on a punt. I would bet they decline it, take the ball right now. It would appear that is what's going to happen. But from a Cowboy standpoint, I think if you look back, that's almost as good as a punt. Well, that is, especially after that uh, uh, penalty on you. You see, Mark Tuane had to block Lawrence Taylor. And when you get number 56 on you, you get a little nervous. And he just got a little jumpy, and he started to back up before the ball was snapped. If anyone's going to make it Illegal jumpy. motion. Offense, number 71, penalty decline, first down. The Giants take over at their own 37. 
See, watch 71 here. See, he's looking out here at Lawrence Taylor. See, he looks in, then he looks out. He knows he has to block Taylor. He sees the movement, and then he starts too soon. 3 nothing Giants, still in the first quarter. Look, Da Vinci, you've got great ideas, but I mean, what is this, an egg beater? It's a machine that will make man fly. Well, it'll never fly if you can't get your idea across. Here, use the Xerox desktop publisher. The workstation lets you create your documents. Then the laser printer prints it out laser perfect. Looks neat, huh? And it'll fly. Oh. Desktop publishing from Team Xerox. It brings out the genius in you. Dear Subaru, every day I drive to work with three colleagues. Combined weight, 800 pounds. We travel two and a half hours in stop and go traffic. Yet my Subaru has 250,000 miles on it, and it hasn't failed me yet, which is important. Because I don't want this car breaking down. I spend enough time with these guys as it is. Of all cars in America, Subaru is second only to Mercedes in customer satisfaction. Wendy's new big classic hamburger. This is the good stuff. The soft Kaiser bun. The fat tomato. This is the good stuff. The fresh toppings. The beef. This is the good stuff. Wendy's new big classic. This is the good stuff. Let's watch that turnover again, Pat. Herschel Walker right here makes a great catch on the sideline. That's a heck of a catch. He starts to run. Now watch 46. Greg Lasker comes in and knocks the ball out with his right hand. See, so knocked the ball out, and then Terry Kennard comes up with the, the fumble recovery. But that was still a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch. That was from Pelour to Walker, and now it's Sims at the helm. 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Sims and the Giants lead for a fumble. And Dallas says they have it. And the officials agree. Ed Jones. So I think that was on the handoff, Pat. I don't think he was hit. It looked like the handoff could have been a little high. But you see it gets up there and just... As he went to stick it in there, it hit the shoulder pads or something and just bounced right out. Of course, Too Tall was right there. Too Tall draped the big body around it. Two turnovers apiece, and the Cowboys take over with 34 seconds left to play in the first quarter, trailing the Giants 3-0. First and 10, Dallas at the Giant 37. Full house backfield. Steve Pelour is the quarterback, and now Newsom comes out. Pelour, on the option play, keeps it himself and gets down to about the 31-yard line before Leonard Marshall tripped him up. I'll tell you, that takes a lot of guts on the Cowboys. They have one quarterback who's in the house getting x-rayed, and then the other quarterback running an option play. Ooh. Reggie Collier would be the backup to Steve Pelour if something happened to him. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. They won't get another one off. And so at Giants Stadium at the end of quarter number one, the Giants lead the Cowboys 3-0. Tonight, the deed is done. The culprits at large, but who's the killer? Jeannie Francis, David Ogden Stiers, or Susan Andon? Murder, she wrote. They came to New York Harbor from around the world to salute a special lady on her birthday. Hi, I'm Phil Sims of the New York Giants, here with my wife, Diana, and our son, Christopher. Join us on behalf of the National Football League and the United Way and a special salute to Miss Liberty. She extended her invitation, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, and they came with their dreams. And for 100 years, that light of liberty and the American dream have burned brightly. And for 100 years, the United Way has become that light. 
helping people find the human dignity that makes real freedom and liberty possible. The NFL salutes the United Way and Miss Liberty as they celebrate their centennial. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. This message furnished by the National Football League. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Subaru and the Subaru XT, the Sport Magazine Super Bowl MVP Award. And by Team Xerox, people and products that help bring out the genius in you. There go the x-rays of Danny White's right wrist and hand. They brought him out to the sideline to be viewed, and now they're going back to be further reviewed. See if they would put that thing up to the light for us, we could see what it looked like. You could diagnose it. Well, you could. You could make things. Now look here, this thing here, the deal here. What they do is they bring it out, show it to the doctor, and then go in with the report. It'll be second and four. Cowboys at the giant 31. With Newsom and Dorsett. Valor outside Renfro, first down. Mark Collins, a gain of 10. Collins was the defender. Well, that was the type of thing that Paul Hackett was telling us that they wanted to do is get a little running game going so that they could then fake the run. And that was a play pass. They pulled the guard out there, got everything going. Got that giant defense coming up, and it popped the ball to Mike Renfro. Fleur, every time we have seen him, has been most impressive. In fact, Tom Landry said, if it were not for Sherrard, Walker, and Fleur, we wouldn't be 6-2. and two. Remember, we did the game against the Redskins. He had a big day that day. Walker and Newsom in front of Dorsett. Walker moves left. Here comes reverse. Walker looking to throw, has no one, and gets down to about the 20 before Harry Carson smacked him down. Nobody got open. You want to see a uh, you want to see a mismatch? They came on the reverse. The guy that had to block Lawrence Taylor was Steve Pelour. And I'll tell you, he gave him. I mean, he come into him with a shot. Now watch Pelour. He'll pitch. Now he's going to go to the right. There's the hand up. Now watch who the lead blocker is. It's number 16. Look at the guy he has to block. It's Lawrence Taylor. So he takes Taylor on from the front. Carson takes him on from the back. And he's the quarterback. Second and 10. Pelour got away from Taylor, but the second man there was Perry Williams, and down he goes. The second sack. Sad news, tragic news about Danny White. He has a broken wrist and will not be back, obviously. Tell you, there's Perry Williams again in the corner. Look, he's out there like a coverage guy. Then he comes in on the blitz. Lawrence Taylor was the first guy there, and as you said, Perry Williams put it on him. That's why they had to take Jim Bird out of practice there. He hits his own guy. You see where he hits him? He hits him right. in the head. Up, up the side of the head. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be third and 16 back at the 27 now. Pelour out of the spread. Trying to make himself heard. Has some time. Gets it out to Walker. Walker gets around the corner. Herschel Walker down to about the 15. Not enough for first down. But in range for Septian. Greg Lasker finally took him down. Gain of 12. Danny White again, in case you didn't hear, has a fracture of the right wrist. I'll tell you, this has been a tough year for Boy. Danny White. He had that hip flexor thing, and, and he was doing so well. You know, he was he was 99 uh, in the quarterback rating, 99, the leading quarterback in the NFL. He had Paul Hackett, the new system he really liked. And I'll tell you, he's a tough guy and a good competitor. From 33 yards out, Raphael set the end. It's no good. Never even close. And 
And so the Giants of Bill Parcells lead to Tom Landry's Cowboys 3-0. Second quarter. Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The V8 with so much performance, it makes every road a downhill run. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. Nowadays, when a businessman gets stuck in his car, he doesn't have to be just stuck in his car. He can be talking to a client or a prospective client or be in touch with his own office. He can be doing a million different things if he has our mobile net cellular car phone service. Just imagine how much more productive you could be with mobile net. G. No, GTE. Come ride with me and I'll take you where you've never been before. Ride with me and I'll show you that there's really so much more. There's a place you'll never know. Come on down, don't miss the show. Ride, ride with me, and I'll show you America. On a Honda ATV, the end of the road is just the beginning. Lynn Hollander wanted her son to marry a nice girl, but he's fallen for a woman as old as his mom. Ellen Burstyn, Tuesday Well, then Patrick Cassidy. Something in common tonight. Next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, CBS Sports presents college football again. Some of you will see the North Carolina Tar Heels against the Clemson Tigers. Both teams are in the midst of the fight for the ACC championship. Or some of you will see a Pac-10 matchup between Stanford and UCLA. That's college football next Saturday here on CBS. Steve Pelour will have to carry the load, and if something happens to him, the load would fall on the shoulders of Reggie Collier. Raphael Septien just missed from 33 yards. Morris the ball carrier. Joe Morris. Barrels out to about the 25 before Everson Walls knocks him down, but Morris still got six yards. Average yards rushing. Dallas 2.7 so far. The Giants mostly due to Joe Morris 6.8. And that will get the job done. Second down and four. Giants at their own 26. Sims back to throw. Dumps it over the middle to Moat. Fumble. And I don't know. The celebration would indicate that it goes to the guys in blue and now. Officials verify that. Again, it's Ed Jones, his second recovery of the day. You know, that's the fifth turnover in this first half. And it seems like every giant cowboy game goes that way. And they talk about it. Bill Parcells was just saying the other day, I said, what do you have to do to beat him? And he said, play error-free football. Well, of course, when you have that many turnovers, you can't. Unless the other team has that many turnovers. Right now, it's 3-2 in that category. The Giants have turned it over three times. Steve Pelour has Tony Darset behind him. Renfro lines up next to Newsom, and now Newsom goes in motion. Fake and look out, Pelour. Pass incomplete. And Pelour lucky to come away with his life. Well, you know, it's, that, again. it's me. that same blitz again, bringing Perry Williams the corner, and that's one that you don't see. I mean, a, a quarterback doesn't count the cornerback. See, now, he's the outside guy. See him here, number 23? Now, watch him. He's out there. He's out there, and then he comes on a blitz. Now, no one ever counts him. Then he's all the way in here outside the tackle. Taylor's coming inside. Williams is coming outside, and Banks is coming from the other side. That's a whole pack. There are a lot of people coming. And Pelour was lucky to get the ball away. He drops it in. Pelour over the head, incomplete. Intended for Mike Sherrard. Kenny Hill had a shot at it. I think 
George Martin had a shot at Steve Pallor. That's where the Giants figured that they had to do it. Of course, they talked about Danny White. Said, when we've had success, we've put pressure on them. We've knocked them down. We've beat them around. And that's the way to beat the Cowboys. Pallor, perhaps, uh, with all the injuries, a little bit more mobile than Danny White. And he needs to be the kind of pressure they're putting on him. Especially that one two plays ago where he had three guys coming and not one of them were blocked. Third and ten at the 28. Walker and Newsom are back there with Pelour. The crowd again is loud and Pelour shouts. Tony Hill had it and lost it. And he had a couple of strides on Perry Williams. The flag down right. there, Pat. Perry Williams fell down. There was contact at about the 15 yard line. Pass interference. Defense, number 23. First down. That'll give the Cowboys a first down at the Giant 14. There was contact there. We'll see it right about the 15 yard line because Perry Williams falls down. You see him trip and go down, and that's how Tony Hill got behind him. I don't know if that was interference or not. When he started to fall, it looked like that's when he grabbed him or put his arm on him. Of course, you can only hit him in the first five yards or after the ball gets there. The Cowboys now go with two tight ends, and the handoff is to Herschel Walker. Walker gets down to about the 11. Hurt was the first giant there a gain of three see how strong that Jim Bird is he was standing straight up and when Herschel Walker ran into him and it was like he ran into the wall in the stadium so we can see it watch Bert come off a double team here now watch Walker Bert standing straight up Walker ran right into him and that was the end of the line of course Bert had a little help but you know, Burt's kind of built in a football position. You know, around six foot, six one, 260 pounds. Built in a stance almost. Yeah. Valor, touchdown, Renfro. Mark Collins was the defender, an 11 yard shot. From Steve Pallor to Mike Renfro. Well, Mark Collins is a rookie that they're going to work on. And of course, they have the old veteran of Mike Renfro. He just gets inside. Now, once he gets inside, Collins didn't get his hands on him. He has him beaten down there. When you get down inside that 10 and that corner's up tight, he has to boom. He has to hit that wide receiver. If the wide receiver, like Renfro, gets past him without a hit, he's going to get a touchdown. He was always inside, right from the beginning. Collins Set didn't get his hands up. Right. Extra point from Septian with Pelour holding is good. And the Cowboys lead it 7-3 with 11 minutes left to play in the first half. For me. But roomy enough for all of us. Olds calls Delta 88 the family car that didn't forget the family. And Fuzzy's family agreed. <laughs> Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. 
He's five feet, seven inches of pure flesh. A man who cuts back to cut loose. Joe Morris leads the Giants against the Eagles next Sunday on CBS Sports. Well, you think about those Eagles. Everybody sort of at the beginning of the year after the way they started thought, hey, this is not much, but they're getting better every week. But you know, anytime you play the Eagles, I think they're in every game they play because they always play that strong defense. And they and they're they're a the type of team that will get turnovers. As we see in this game, when you get turnovers, then you get touchdowns. That's what the Cowboys have done. Set the end line drive kickoff goes to Collins, and he's taken down by Todd Fowler. Jesse Penn helped out along with Bill Bates. Let's watch a touchdown again. Now watch Mark Collins here. He doesn't get his hands up, and he lets Renfro get inside him right now. You got to get, when you're here, you got to get your hands up. But once he gets in here on the goal line, it's a touchdown. Now watch Collins' hands. They don't come up at all. There's no bump. Watch Renfro. He gets inside. Now he knows he has a touchdown. When you get down there, you got to bump that guy before you let him go into the end zone. Giants ball. First and ten, and Sims back to throw with a wind at his back. Incomplete. High over the head of Mark Romero. For an NFL update now, let's send you back to New York. Here is Rick Musburger. Well, Pat, here's the story on the 49ers. They gave up a couple touchdowns to Ruben Mays, and then Mike Morosky threw that TD strike. And now it is 14-10 midway through the second quarter. New Orleans still ahead by four. Let's go back to Pat and John. Here at Giants Stadium, Brett at 7-3. The Cowboys just scored on an 11-yard touchdown pass from Kalur to Mike Renfro. Second and 10 Giants. And off Morris. And Morris breaks out of the pack and almost was gone. Ron Fellows saved the touchdown, but Morris still got 16. He was almost off to the races. Watch this play. It's a little delayed thing. Watch more. See how he just kind of slides that first step. Then he comes over here going full speed and just picks a hole. Got a good block there by Solomon Miller, 87. That freed him for about 10 more yards. Now Ron Fellows brought him down. He got up to the 48. Morris has been able to run, but the turnovers have been the big factor. Sims back to throw and fires down the middle incomplete. Intended for Solomon Miller, who tripped, slipped down, and got back up and couldn't come up with it. Bates was the defender. I think because of the injuries, I think that the Giants are having to play guys like Solomon Miller, number 87, that are good prospects, but really aren't ready to start and play championship caliber football at this time. And yeah, this is. guy knows it as well as anyone. Sure. Second and 10 from the 48. Vince Warren is split wide to the left. Miller is out to the right. They give to Morris. And Morris pounds for a first down. Boy, what you said earlier is so true. When he starts to make that read, he makes the read. Speed. Top speed, and then he still has an acceleration left. He gets a good block by his fullback, Maurice Carthon, here, number 44. Watch 44 lead. Give him the block there on Bates. That gave him the acceleration, and again, about 10 more yards. But as you say, he's reading that thing at full speed. Otis Anderson now as the lone setback. Morris already closing in on 100 yards. Sims back to throw, fires down the middle, and it's almost picked off by Fellows. Intended for Bobby Johnson, very nearly an interception, and Sims is hearing some, some sounds he doesn't like. Well, of course, he's having a tough time. Anytime he throws to a wide receiver, it seems like it's almost always intercepted. And anytime he throws to a tight end, there's been a fumble. They've had two fumbles by the tight ends, Bavaro and Moa. So bad things are happening to him in their passing game. Good things in their running game. Second and 10 at the Cowboy 40. 9-15 left in the first half. And off again is to Morris. And this time, he really turns nothing into something. Too tall Jones got him from the backside, or he would have been gone again. A gain of three. Morris 12 carries 95 yards and we're still in the second quarter. He had 181 on Monday night against the Redskins. Third 
down and seven from the Cowboy 37. Dallas leading at 7-3. The winner of this will at least have a tie for first place. Sims out of the sprint. Blitz coming. Johnson will have a first down. Manny Hendricks was the defender. The rookie and they went right after him. A gain of eight. And a giant first down. See Joe Morris coming in and giving the play to, to Phil Sims. He had to look up to him. Phil Sims is about a head taller than Joe Morris. <laughs> he had to look up and say, hey, run this one. It's a good one. First and 10 from the 29. And Sims goes back to throw on first down. Duckman chases him out of the pocket. McConkey. No catch. McConkey thought he had it. So do the fans. But they don't wear all striped shirts. Close. Now when he gets the ball, you know, both feet are inbounds. You don't know where that left knee is. See, because the knee has to be in. The, the feet are both inbounds. He has the ball. Isn't there a book by a name like that? Well, it's the opposite of that. That was having two feet in, but a knee out. There's, a, there's a, like one knee equals two feet, but two feet in. In fact, they gave it to him. After a review, I guess. Now, wait a minute. Maybe they're still reviewing. After further review by the instant replay official, the play stands in completion, second down. Don't equal a knee. Because McCorkey knew that he had both feet in. And then they had to say that knee. And the word has to be inconclusive, because that's what they use in these things. That's the thing that gets them off the hook. That could be the next book. <laughs> inconclusive. No matter what anyone does, inconclusive. it's inconclusive. I don't know. Here's Morris. And he's around the corner again. John Dutton knocked him out of bounds, but he is again putting on some show. A gain of seven, and he's over 100 yards already. Hey, we were talking about Joe Morris the other day, and Bill Parcells said he's really not a dominant bat. I think he's a dominant bat. He said he's a dominant runner, but not a dominant back because he doesn't do the, all those things like blocking and catching and all those things. But yet when we ask the people who are going to play the Giants what they have to do, they say the first thing, we have stopped with Joe Morris. They're all scared to death of number 20. On third down, McConkey was the move man. Sims looking downfield, has Bavaro. And Bavaro has the first down. That's a good catch. Hey, that, that was a heck of a catch by Bavaro because he had to reach back. That wasn't one of Phil Simms' best throws. Watch him here. Watch Bavaro. He has to reach back. He was going to his right and had to come back to his left. That's what you call good hands. You almost see that and say he has good hands. That's one of those things they tell you, what do we do in a situation like that? And they say you just react like a football player. Here's Morris. And Morris again breaks a tackle the arms of Everson Walls and finally Randy White brought him down. Three yards for Morris. 7-3 Cowboys clock running at 7.25 left to play. New Giant record his 12th 100 yard rushing game. He's been something the last two years. Second and seven the ball is at the Cowboy 12. Sims to Morris. And Joe skips down inside the 10 to about the 8. John Dutton brought him down. A gain of 4. That'll make it 3rd and 3. Well, you see how they run that play? It's a little delay. And uh, uh, everyone just blocks man. Sims brings the ball back to him. He takes a little step to the left. And then he just starts running full speed. Watch Sims will come back, start off like it's a pass. You see the little adjustment step Morris takes. Now he hands him the ball, and then it's full speed from there. 
but it doesn't start off full speed. Miller was the man moving. Morris is the man moving. An eight-yard touchdown run by Joe Morris. Strong and quick and dominating, no matter what they say. Number 44, Maurice Carthon, get a good lead block here. He takes out Roar, and then Morris is able to cut off that block, get those shoulders square, and take it into the end zone. Allegre to try the extra point with Rutledge holding. And Allegre is good, and it's 10 7 Giants with 624 left to play in the first half. A little something special coming up for you when we come back. Giving that extra effort makes winners. Be all you can be. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. Number 34, Herschel Walker of the Dallas Cowboys is one of the most highly publicized first-year players in league history. But the former Heisman Trophy winner has backed up his college and pro press clippings by running with determination and second effort. In the span of a few short weeks, Herschel Walker has already soared into the elite of NFL running backs, proving that he is indeed the best he can be. In a battleground, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Moving tank, back front, 2,000. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. Ah! Yeah! We win, the whole tank wins. The whole team wins. Not just one person. Find your future in the army. 7 Giants. This has never been seen before. A new video by the Dallas Cowboys. Say is rap. But I couldn't see Tom Landry rapping. But they would caught him rapping. Tom in a rap. Well, I still have my doubts. Rapping Tom. <laughs> Robert Levette and Daryl Clack back deep. Allegre, an ex cowboy himself, and the ball again blow off the tee. The scoring drive by the Giants. Very impressive. Particularly Joe Morris. Allegra's kick will be deep. And they won't bring it out. Darrell Clack downs it in the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. And from there they'll start. A little disturbance uh, settled very quickly. Next Sunday on CBS. Bears go to Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers winning today. They've shaken up that ship. And the Bears have been struggling a little bit. So it'll be good to have a look at them. 12.30 starts with the NFL today. And John and I will go down 90 miles down the turnpike to Philadelphia with the Giants again. That's late. 
seven, Giants leading Dallas. Newsom the move man. Handoff is to Dorsett. A little room for Tony. And Dorsett out of bounds after a gain of about nine. Maybe enough for a first down. Perry Williams made the stop. I'll tell you who made a nice block on that play was Timmy Newsom again. You know, he was leading Dorsett in the hole. He was the guy that uh, reamed it out a little and gave 33 some room. Then you see 30. You see him coming in here? Now watch 30. Newsom right there on Lawrence Taylor. Mm -hmm. He got Taylor down. That's the guy you have to block, and that sprung Dorsett. Second and one. The ball just shy of the 30. Giants leading 10-7. 6-11 left to play in the first half. is tight end Doug Cosby and that would be enough for a first down Harry Carson on the stop with Gary reasons there with him you know Pat that's one thing you don't see as much from these Cowboys is throwing to Cosby or their tight end seemed like last year they used to throw a lot more to him and also to their wide receivers and this year with the acquisition of Herschel Walker they're throwing a lot more to their running back and don't you think the addition of Paul Hackett has had a lot to do with that. I think that's had a lot to, to do with it because Paul Hackett brought that 49er type philosophy. That ball control passing game to him. First down, Dallas. Palour fake. Here comes the blitz again. And Palour is down. It was Kenny Hill. Ball was loose momentarily. That's the third sack by the Giants. And that's that same blitz we were talking about before from the other side. And I'll tell you, Steve Palour is vehement here. You know, he's a calm guy. He never says anything, but I know what he's thinking. He's thinking if we can't get these guys blocked, and it's right here this time, they think he's going to cover, and he just comes right here, and no one blocks him. See, so start out there. They think Kenny is a cover guy. Now watch him. He comes free. Now, Pelour is saying, look, every time I go back, no one picks up these blitzes. He's claiming now face mask, and he's right. Oh, he had that right. That's what he was complaining about. A loss of nine, second and 19. Pelour again. Into the pack and out of there comes Herschel Walker. Penalty marker down the way back. Hey, that's what the Cowboys want to do is get it to those backs in the open field. Walker got very, very close to a first down. Well, he's a powerful guy, that Herschel Walker. What a receiver. That's where the flag is. The flag's way back in the 10-yard line. That was a screen pass set up to be a screen pass. Now the flag, and now they move the ball even further into Giant territory. And Lawrence Taylor does a high five with with the referee. The way he, he lunged at him, I thought he was going to do more than a high five. So too. He hasn't told us about the penalty yet. Walker and Dorset, and this is Dorset to the outside, skips away from one man. Again, a penalty flag is down. This has got to be against Dallas, and it's got to be in the area. It's got to be holding. You know, that one before on the Herschel Walker screen pass was an unnecessary roughness against the Giants. I think it was against Pelour, hitting him with an elbow. This will be against holding. the Cowboys. Offense, number 84, replay the first down. Osby still first down. I think the penalty might have been against it. was a violation against Pelour, but I think it was Lawrence Taylor. White's uh, wrist, by the way, in the event you joined us late, it was fractured. It's been put in a cast, and he'll be wear wearing it, we are told, from somewhere between four and six weeks. Renfro in motion. First and 20, they get to Dorset. And he got a couple, but no more. Tripped up by Jim Burton. 
reasons also in the bottom of the pile. A gain of one for Dorsett. Hey, Jim Burt's having a good game in there against that run, that inside run. He's getting help from both his ends, George Martin and Leonard Marshall, but they really have that running lane or that inside running thing plugged up pretty well. Clock running with 340 left to play in the first half. Giants leading the Cowboys 10 to 7, second down. They need 19 for a first. Lador, retro. Hammered out of bounds by Collins. They got 10 of it. Hey, Mark Collins is having a tough time. He had a tough time last Monday night against the Redskins and Gary Clark. And now he's having a little tough time today. And you have to remember, he's a rookie. You know, he has good quickness, good speed, and he's learning. That's the good news, but the bad news is he's learning out here on the field. Tough place to learn. Well, Elvis Patterson uh, has been injured, but he practiced this week, and uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, he's playing in here in the nickel situation. Third down. That time. You see the difference? Coverage is so much easier if you get your hands on it. Remember the one Renfro caught for the touchdown? He never got his hands on it. That time he got a good start. Boom, hands up. Then he was able to get down there in the coverage with him. Saxon is in. They feel too far out for a Septian field goal attempt. And against that win, I think that's a very wise judgment. He's only punted once. This time he'll go against the wind, however. A conky signals fair catch and makes it at the 11. And that's where the Giants will take over, leading by three. 24 yard punt is off. As Marshall and Burt get their instructions over on the sideline. Next week, of course, it begins with the NFL today. Doubleheader game number one. The big one is the Bears at Tampa Bay. Rams against New Orleans. That gets bigger. Washington, Green Bay, and Minnesota against Detroit. It all begins with the NFL today. And then the doubleheader game, these Giants against the Eagles at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Hand off to Otis Anderson. John Dutton hit him as soon as he got the ball with help from Jeff Rohr and a gain of only one. Well, you know, that was that counter trade. They pulled Carl Nelson, the right tackle, and Too Tall Jones got right in behind him. That's the way to play that play. You know, take that defensive end and just follow the tackle when he pulled. See, Too Tall saying, hey, look, I've seen that. The Redskins running at me all the time. All you guys do it. When Nelson pulled, I'll just follow him and find the ball carrier. Kevin Brooks. Jeff Coat, Jim Jeff Coat, who normally would be at right defensive and has a problem with his ankle, so Brooks has replaced him. Second and nine. Sims gives to Morris. Morris is hit just outside the 15 by Dutton. A gain of four. There's Phil McConkey. He'll go in for the three wide receivers. That's what he's waiting for. To decide if they want it, they give him the play, and there he goes. You know, when he came back for Green Bay, the first thing he did came back. Phil McConkey went into the blackboard, and he wrote up there, "Green." Now grass is always greener on the other yeah. side, and he wrote like heck, or something like that. Something like that. Third and five, it is, and that is the two-minute warning. It'll be third and five. Two minutes to go in the first half with the Giants lead. The Giants 10, the Cowboys 7. Two minutes to go in the first half. And at the half, Brandon Irv and Will McDonough will have scores and highlights from around the league. Also, to be successful in Hollywood, you have to know how to cast your star. The Los Angeles Rams had a hard time finding their own leading man. That story is coming up at the half. It'll be third and five. Randy White. The Rams do have a leading man, Eric Dickerson. 
Lunges into the draw play to Lawrence. And Joe lunges close to first down yardage. Ed Jones tripped him up. Two of football's best linebackers over on the giant bench, Banks and Taylor. And of course, Banks came on that blitz, and that was the one that put Danny White out of the game with the broken wrist. No one picked him up. I tell you, you know, you can't concentrate so much on 56 that you don't block 58 because he can do as much damage as 56. Well, there's a pretty good illustration of the story of the Giant defense, one of the best, if not the best. The leading tackler, Banks. It's going to be short by that much of a first down. And I would think you would see Landetta. Here he comes. Last year in the entire season, the four linebackers for the Giants were the leading tacklers on the team. The same is true this year. I think that's the way their defense is set up. You know, the three man line and the whole thing is based around having four good linebackers. Gordon Banks is back deep for Dallas number 87, and Sean Landetta will punt with a win that is back. Well, I'll tell you, that is one big play for that Dallas Cowboy defense, though, being able to stop Morris short of the first down. Because now if they get the ball with one minute 40 seconds, they're going to get pretty good field position. They still have two timeouts left. And, uh, you know, they can go to work on a score here. Landetta is standing at about his own seven yard line, and Banks is back at the Dallas 31. Taking plenty of time. Clock moves. They snap it with two seconds to go on the 32nd clock. Knuckler. Banks is going to have a tough time handling that. He got away from it. And the ball bounds out of bounds in the hands of Maurice Carthon. And the Cowboys will take over after a 40 yard punt by Landetta. You know, with a minute three seconds, and as we said, they have two timeouts left. All the Cowboys need here is about two complete passes, and that'll put them in field goal range. In the event that you might have joined us after we started, Danny White suffered a broken wrist when he was hit on a blitz by Carl Banks. Five turnovers so far have led to 10 points. Joe Morris has 125 yards rushing already. We still have a minute and three seconds left in the first half. Steve Pelour has replaced White. Seven out of ten for 115 yards and one touchdown. Walker and Newsom are back with Pelour. He goes to work. To Walker. Walker is hammered and knocked backwards, but it takes four guys to do it. Well, that's what you have to do when Herschel Walker catches that ball. You're not going to tackle him one on one you have to get a bunch of guys there Dallas up quickly clock running now down to 40 seconds and Pelour takes the snap into the pocket is Pelour he's going to get out of bounds get his first down and stop the clock very intelligent play the one thing the Cowboys wanted to do and they haven't done it this first half yet is go deep to Mike Sherrard He's their new deep guy, their new speed guy. Paul Hackett was saying that we want to go into this game and take at least four to five shots deep to Sherrard. They haven't done it yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they take one here pretty soon. I wouldn't either. They say he has been timed in the 40 in 4-2. That's as fast as I've ever heard of. Me too. Lower out of the spread. Martin moves, gets back. No flag. Still on his feet as Pelour has got a man open. There's your guy. And he was open. That's Mike Sherrard. I have to believe that the wind must have altered the flight of that ball. Well, it looks so because it looked like he was turning to the right. Then he had to come back to his left, back to the outside. Watch, he's turned outside. Then he has to come back inside. And it looked like he misjudged it. You yeah. see, he had his right hand up. It missed his hand and just slid right down his arm. Herb Welch was the man back there with him. Second and ten. Giants ten, 
Cowboys seven. 24 seconds left. First half. Martin got away from Posderic. Here's Walker. And Walker trying to get out of bounds, trying to get his first down. Now they're going to have to burn one of those timeouts if he didn't make it. A gain of 11. He did get the first down yardage. And the Cowboys take that timeout with 16 seconds left to play in the first half. Such a tasty combination of goodness. So much to get into. Mm, DLT. The Giants rushing three men, and that always creates anguish among the fans because when the team like the Giants on defense as they are now go into what is called the prevent and you only rush three and keep eight back it looks like uh, most times it comes out to be an ineffective maneuver well they learned that against the Redskins Monday night I think the Giants defense is much much better when they bring someone at least to Lawrence Taylor you know they've had success they brought Taylor they brought Banks they brought their safety Kenny Hill they brought their corners and they've got big sacks when they just rush three and lay off they're not as good they get to become a soft defense 16 seconds left in the first half they only rush three again and Pelour up in the pocket scrambling the ball to Renfro. Timeout quickly, and there's still seven seconds left on the clock. And now the Cowboys will kick their field goal. Well, they'll try. It's tough in this direction. A gain of 15. But I still think that somewhere, you know, when they get the ball in there, somewhere you have to give them the pressure. Even though the time's running out at the half for the game, you still have to put pressure on these guys because that's what the Giants do best. Right now, as you look at the, the ribbons up on top of the goalpost, the wind doesn't seem to be nearly as severe as it was earlier in the game. As you look at the flags up on top of the stadium, I think that's true, too. You know, it's funny. The flags down here in the field are blowing this way from right to left, and up on top, they're blowing from left to right. And I remember years ago, we're playing the Jets. That Shea Stadium, yeah. yeah. And we, Eubank, before the game, told me, he said, Johnny, and I knew then, watch out when he says, Johnny. <laughs> he says, look up there under the second deck, there's that little flag. He said, that's how you tell how the wind is going here. The whole game, I was scared to death to look up at that flag because I knew that wasn't what would happen. <laughs> and I'd catch myself looking up and I'd look back because I knew he had a fan or something up there. Johnny, he called you. Yeah, Johnny, <laughs> you know, look out. 43 yards with Pelour holding. Raphael set the end. He has missed one. He's missed another. Wide left. They got everything done but the field goal. Three seconds left on the clock. Giants leading by three. situation because he did the same thing happened to both right. kicks they both missed off to the left right. that's the end of the first half and an interesting first half as both teams head to the locker room and again I don't want to be redundant but in case you missed it or joined us late Danny White started at quarterback for Dallas suffered a broken wrist He'll be wearing a cast for at least four weeks, maybe six. That's the end of the first half. The score of the Giants 10, Dallas 7. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Oldsmobile Quality. Feel it at your nearest Oldsmobile dealer.
Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why the night belongs to Michelob. And by Honda All-Terrain Vehicles, come ride with us and we'll show you America. Amway presents the Walter Cronkite, America's Cup Report. In 1983, a gutsy and innovative crew of Australians returned to Newport, Rhode Island for the fourth attempt to unbolt the America's Cup from an American sailing dominance 132 years long. The race of the century, they succeeded in doing what no other yacht had ever done. I'm Walter Cronkite, and for the next 16 weeks, I'll be reporting from Australia on the America's Cup. Thirteen boats from around the world will compete for the right to challenge a new yachting power. They battle through four months of trials and elimination until one boat is left to meet the Australian Defender next February for the America's Cup. That final best four of seven series is the World Series, the Super Bowl of yachting. In this spot in coming weeks, I'll be reporting on the people, the technology, the tactics, and the money that it takes to win the America's Cup. Some people are as reliable as sunrise. You can see it in their smile, feel it in their handshake. Their life is fulfilling. Their work is rewarding. Happiness is something they've created for themselves. Amway people. Hard-working Americans you can rely on to give their best. Every day. I'm Brent Musburger with Will McDonough, North Cross. Irv, why do I always think that Tom Landry has two game plans, one for the first half and one for the second? Because he's always coaching better than anybody else in the second half, I guess, I right? So. <laughs> 10-7 Giants with the lead, so Landry will have to come back there. Now, San Francisco and New Orleans, the storyline here is that the Saints have an emerging star. He's a running back by the name of Reuben Mays, and he got the Saints off to a 14-0 burst. Irv, this is a beautiful reverse, 27-yard touchdown. You, you like to see something like this, but you can't coach it. This is all instinctive. Trying to get out on the right side, can do it. Reverses his field for the score. Bill Walsh watching from the sideline needed some help from his defense. He's gotten it all year long. Watch Jim Fonhorst. He drops back into the zone. Badly thrown pass. He picks off his third interception of the season. He goes back 45 yards. That set up a touchdown and it quickly became 14-10. Now, Will, we saw a picture of Joe Montana in civilian clothes. When's he going to be back for the Niners? Well, they're talking about him coming back like the 17th of November, the 24th. I think they're going to try to get him back sooner. They have to to stay in the race. All right. Now, the most physical game of the day is going on right now in New England. Atlanta has had two touchdowns called back because of instant replay, and it's been tough going all the way. Tony Eason's first interception of the season for the Patriots after 178 straight passes, it was picked off. Now, David Archer threw this touchdown pass, and it was called back because the receiver's feet were not down in the end zone after he gained control of the ball. And they settled for a field goal that time, and Dan Henning was upset along the sideline. And then for the Patriots, Andre Tippett, their great linebacker, was knocked out indefinitely, a sprained left knee. He gets leg whipped. Well, we talked about violence in the pregame show. What about that play? But I think if you watch that play, his knee went before he got leg whipped. You see the one step before he gets down, his right knee pops up in the air, and you know he's in trouble. All right, now we get late word that Tony Eason has just flipped a touchdown pass to Collins in that game. And so the extra point was blocked. This is moments ago, and the Falcons lead the Patriots. 10-9. They are late in the second quarter of that one. Buffalo and Tampa Bay. I'll tell you, the Bills really look hapless in this one. They attempted a reverse on a kickoff. 
fumbled the ball, and the Bucks recovered the end zone for a touchdown. Miami, Houston, Dan Marino, a little sluggish at the start. He's come on to throw three touchdown passes, and now he has 20 touchdowns for the season for the Dolphins. He's a one-man gang. Eddie. Green Bay and Pittsburgh, and in this game, it is 13-3. The Steelers with the lead over the Packers. They are at the half of that one. Cincinnati and Detroit. The Bengals tie with the Browns for first in the AFC Central. 10-7, the Bengals with the lead on the line. Speaking of the Browns, the quarterback who, to me, looks better and better with each passing Sunday is Bernie Kosar, and he has the Browns ahead in this one, 14-3 over the Colts. Philadelphia and St. Louis, and Buddy Ryan's defense. They are throwing a shutout at the Cardinals. Of course, it is only halftime here in St. Louis. Irv? Here's a guy who's probably the happiest guy on the field right now, Reggie White. You'll see him pop up number 92. They move him from defensive tackle to end this weekend, and there he goes for a sack. And there's the unhappiest man in St. Louis. <laughs> You got that right. Of course, Charles Crawford from the Eagles goes over the top for his first touchdown in the NFL season. Of course, you know, uh, Lomax is under great pressure in St. Louis. What's the name of his book? Lomax's book? Yeah, How to play one. quarterback. No, no, no. It's third and long. Third. I think we should rename it. Third and very, very long. <laughs> NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Once upon a time, millions of us roamed the bathrooms of America. We're bull shavers, convinced we had to use shavers with all kinds of expensive extras. But we don't pay an arm and a hoof anymore, because us bull shavers are becoming Bic shavers. Bic gives us an extraordinary shave at an extraordinary price, without bells or whistles. To pay more makes you, well, bullheaded. Try the Bic for normal or sensitive skin, and you, too, will have a beef. With bull shaving. Next Saturday, North Carolina takes on a Clemson team with players who believe in razzle-dazzle and fans who believe in razzmatazz or see Stanford meet UCLA. And on Sunday, doubleheader action starts with the NFL today. Then Chicago battles Tampa Bay as Mike Ditka struggles to motivate his Bears back into undisputed world champion form. And get ready for five feet seven inches of pure flesh, a man who cuts back to cut loose. Joe Morris leads the Giants against the Eagles next weekend on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Starting the day with the New York Times won't guarantee it'll be a better day, but it can help make a difference. Make sport. The Times can give you the options that soften the edges and make life a little more interesting and a little more enjoyable. Read it with seven zip. With ideas and information meaningful to you, the times can sharpen your mind and stimulate your senses. No pizza before dinner, Michael. It helps you make more of each day, whether it starts your day or just becomes a part of it. Who's salt goes in here, Dad? Teaspoon. Every day, you'll discover something to savor. It's delicious. Oh, what's for dinner? The New York Times. It adds life to your life. A century ago, the founders of Mercedes-Benz created the world's first automobiles. Over the years, their mastery of technology and intolerance for mediocrity inspired countless automotive legends. Now, as Mercedes-Benz enters its second century, the technology has changed, yet the passion for perfection remains. Creating Mercedes-Benz for 1987, legends for the second century. Is this movie star's marriage a flop? Monday at 4. at halftime to reflect on the Los Angeles Rams. Again, they are on their way to another winning season, and once again, they are doing it the hard way without a star quarterback. Now, that's a recurring problem, one that has plagued the Rams recently. But as Gary Paul Gates now tells us, it didn't start out that way. When the Rams moved from Cleveland to L.A. in 1946, they were the defending NFL champions, and their team leader was a champion quarterback. Bob Waterfield came to L.A. a proven winner and quickly adapted to the local lifestyle. He and Jane Russell became a Hollywood fun couple, and he was followed by other winners, Norm Van Brocklin in the 50s and Roman Gabriel in the 60s. But ever since the end of the Roman era, it's been the dark ages for Ram quarterbacks. Visitors of this historic shrine, this vast coliseum where the Ram gladiators used to perform, can almost hear the echoes of broken dreams at that glamour position. They've had this, you know, this goofy history of quarterbacks all the way down the line. The star names they lured from other teams were past their prime. 
For Burt Jones, Dan Pastorini, and Joe Namath, the Rams were the last stop on their way to a life after football. Then there was Pat Hayden, talented but judged to be too short for the job. And even in the land of illusion, you can't play the game in elevator cleats. Next came Vince Ferragamo, who led the Rams to the Super Bowl and was brazen enough to expect more money for that. The team said no, and Vince chose exile in Canada. That set up a balance of trade move, as the Rams imported Dieter Brock, who despite his years in the cold winds of Canada, couldn't cope with a routine winter day in Chicago. And just last week, with the situation again in chaos, the Rams turned to a clutch performer from another position. Have you become the answer to the Rams quarterback problem? I don't think so. A lot of people have been asking me that now. My mother said, maybe you should just play quarterback. If they won't listen to Eric's mother, then maybe the Rams should take their cue from their Hollywood neighbors, who created the star system. In movies about football, the quarterbacks always seem to win. My recommendation would be if the Rams signed with the William Morris Agency. This way, one of the William Morris executives could be on the coaching staff and help cast the quarterback for that particular Sunday. Mary, what would you think of a studio or a director who would make a movie without a star or leading man? Gosh, it is hard to imagine. I mean, first of all, uh, I have to think what would have happened to Scarlett if there had been no rep to say, well, frankly, I don't give a damn. But don't get the wrong impression. Ram owner Georgia Frontieri does give a damn, and she expects her leading men to at least look the part. Georgia likes her quarterbacks tall and handsome. Most teams just like them tall. Tall and handsome aptly describes a bright new hope for the future. When the Rams announced they had acquired Jim Everett, the move won the instant approval of one member of the Hollywood community. I think this is a good choice, aside from the fact that I love his name, and it sounds like a leader, has all those things, has star value, etc. Uh, I, I think that if they hang on to this fellow and stick with him, I think uh, uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. Maybe the quarterback problem will be, be solved a little bit. We were told that when some local fans heard the news, they assumed the new Ram quarterback wasn't Jim, but Chad, the Everett they knew from primetime television. Is this kind of mistaken identity possible? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, after all, this is Hollywood. Reporting from Tinseltown, I'm Gary Paul Gates. Hey, Will, can you imagine anybody in Chicago asking a press agent about the Bear quarterback? When is Everett going to play for the Rams? Well, it's Hollywood, you know, in uh, show business, everything is timing, and it's not his time yet. He's not ready to play. All right, let's send you back to the stadium now in a game you're enjoying on CBS. That's the halftime score of the Giants over the Cowboys, 10-7. Going in, the Cowboys said they had, they felt they had to throw it. The Giants felt that they had to run it. They've pretty much done that. And that's what's happened. And I, I think that these teams are so evenly matched that this is really going to go down to the fourth quarter. And I think the first half, we've had five turnovers. I think that's really going to be the story of the game. I think the team that, that has the least or the fewest or comes up with a big turnover is going to be the team that wins this game. The big story, I suppose you'd have to say, although it's a sad story, is what happened to Danny White. Well, that's the thing, and we look here, we'll see it. Carl Banks is going to be coming from the outside on a blitz. He comes from the left side, his left side, Danny White's right side. He wasn't blocked. Danny White was looking downfield, didn't see him, and that was a play where he fractured his wrist. Of course, it was also a turnover for the Giants. And the word is on Danny White that he's going to be in a cast for minimum four weeks, perhaps even six weeks. That's the score at the half, Giants by three. Why is the world-famous Metropolitan Life representative weighing and measuring us? MetLife has always been concerned about health. I didn't know that. For years now, MetLife has published useful tables showing the best weight for your height. And they've set aside $4 million for a program to expand health education in schools. I didn't know MetLife was that concerned about health. <laughs> Get Met. It pays. You might get caught out in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery, but I won't. This is a Delco maintenance free battery. And when this green eye is showing, it means I've got all the starting power I need, up to 770 cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. Now through January 3rd, get a $5 rebate on most Delco batteries. See a participating AC Delco retailer for details. Never wait for trouble. Mike, sorry to bother you at home. So why am I always the lucky one? Hey, that's what you get for being so good. Yeah, right. Listen, uh, we got problems with the West Coast deal. Big problems? Big problems. We really need you here. 
I've checked the schedule. An American has flights in the morning at 7, 8, and 9. Fine. Have everything ready and plenty of hot coffee. I'll be on the 9 o'clock flight. Terrific. Tonight. When you're something special, people know it. Has the lack of sophisticated banking products stifled the growth of mid-sized companies? The Bank of New York believes it has. Mid-sized companies get no interest rate risk protection, no easy access to unsecured credit, no help with mergers and acquisitions. In fact, they can't get a lot of the banking services big companies get. So we decided to provide those services at the Bank of New York, where no one keeps a good company down. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Hewlett Packard, the people who turn your business computing problem into a business computing solution. Honda, who invites you to experience the Accord four-door sedans at your local Honda dealer. And by Federal Express, why fool around with anyone else? Ready to go with the second half. Pat Summerall, John Madden at Giants Stadium. Raul Alegre set to kick off with Perry Williams holding the ball to keep it on the tee. Levette is driven back five yards deep in the end zone. A blustery wind, a treacherous wind at Giant Stadium. Yeah, we talked about getting the ball to Walker and Dorsett 40 times. We see in the first half, Walker had it 10, Dorsett 6 for a total of 16, but they had 127 yards. Now that's what they want to do. Now what the Giants want to do is establish and run Joe Moore. We see he runs mostly to the right. But he had 125 yards. So the WD package is about equal to the Morris running package. And Joe Morris has been a tough package in the first half. Tony Dorsett is the lone setback. Steve Kalur, the quarterback. The fake is to Dorsett. The throw is outside to Newsom. Newsom is hit by Mark Collins. And they are saying it was not a fumble. Came up with it. They say he was down. A gain of only four. Well, we're going to have to look at that one again. I don't know. I think that could be one instant replay. Newsom's falling down. Takes the hit underneath. The ball's down before he went down. I would say that's a fumble. Mark Collins made a nice tackle on that. A very good tackle. And you could see the ball coming out. Before he went down. He's been running it back. In fact, they're going to look at it. They see it now. Second and six. We see he has his feet on the ground. He has the ball. He's hit. Now you can see right there. You're going to see the ball coming up before he goes down. Watch the ball is already out now. See it going down Collins' leg. In fact, if we can circle it, the ball is right here before he's down. See it? That's the ball. And as we can come see it coming up. Another angle. Yep, you see the ball is out there right here. See the ball is out before he goes down. That has to be a fumble. They're still discussing it, the officials and the replay officials up here in the press box. See the Dallas offensive unit and the giant defensive unit still on the field. Well, they can't say that that's inconclusive. There was a whistle on the play, killing the play. Dallas's ball, second down. Well, that's the other problem with this is there's no sound in it. I mean, I don't know if there's a whistle, why they blew the whistle. You can see the official saying it's down, it's down, it's down, and the pain for Collins. It's Dallas ball. It's going to be second and six. Unless, unless they review again. I think they're through re reviewing, but I don't understand that. I mean, I, you know, they can always say it's inconclusive, and they'll say the whistle blew. How do they know up here? How's the replay know? And perhaps another announcement. I think they're pointing up at you. That guy Would pointed you please? up at you. Reset the 30 second clock to 17 seconds. Why would they point at me? Because they wanted you to tell them that the, that the whistle blew. To defend them. The whistle blew. How do you know? Killing the play. Was 
brought into the conference and he said yes indeed I did blow the whistle Renfro comes wide right second at six Cowboys their own 24 Steve Collor is the quarterback handoff is to Dorsett and that one is loose and I don't know who came up with that it was bouncing in Cowboy had a shot at it, but the Giants come up with it. I don't believe they do that. You know, you know in, in tennis, remember how they used to do it? If they got a bad call, then they just knocked the next one out. Someone's going to say that, that it just made it right, the next play. Play that. That's going to be the Giants. The Giants end up with a ball anyway. Dorsett, just as he started playing it off his left foot, just as he started his first, he started to move and just the ball, the ball just out. flew out of there. Banks has still got the ball. We don't need to review that. I said, I got the ball, Banks. Said, I've had a big day today. Three turnovers apiece. Giants up by 10-7. Opening seconds of quarter number three, and it's Miller in motion. And the handoff is to Morris. Lawrence comes out of the pack somehow and winds up with about five yards. Four. John Dutton was the leading Cowboy tackler. 19 carries, 129 yards from Lawrence. The other thing about Morris is that amazes me is you, you know he's going to run the ball and he's probably going to run it to their right on the same play and they still can't stop. Second and six. He is very deceptively strong. I think that's the only way to say it. That's Carthen over the left side as Morris gets the rest. Randy White was the first Dallas tackler there. Carthen got two. Well, you have to give it to Carthon every once in a while just to keep him in the ball game. He's always a blocker. He's like another guard. But, you know, before he was a blocker for Joe Morris and the Giants, he was a blocker for Herschel Walker on the Generals in the USFL. So he's always been a blocker for a great back. He's replaced by Tony Galbraith now, who stands back with Sims. And in this situation, they look for him a lot. Sims looking. No time, and down goes Phil Sims. Don Smerick, Jeff Rohr, Jesse Penn. Smerick is number 60. Well, that's one of those things that has to be what you call a coverage sack. Because he really had pretty good time here. So he's looking and popping, and there was no one open to his right. That's one thing the Cowboys have really improved. Let's just see how there's no one open. Well, just freeze it as he's ready, and he's looking over here to his right. See, he sees his double here he can't throw to. The coverage here, that's where he was trying to throw. That time he had no one, so he had to go to the field goal. It's going to be Allegre from 51 yards out. Rutledge holding. That's going to be plenty far enough, but it's wide left. He really got the foot into it. Rutledge had a little trouble with the hold, didn't get it down as quickly as he normally would, and Allegri is wide left. It's still 10 7 Giants. Late one night, when all the families and all the houses all across the land were fast asleep, all of their old family cars were taken away. In their places were left shiny new Honda Accords. And they all drove happily ever after. Hewlett-Packard, we think long and hard about your business computing system and how it can help your people share more information and make better decisions. So before we talk hardware, we answer a lot of hard questions. At Hewlett-Packard, we never stop asking, what if? They need a network package between sales and shipping. What if we took a new approach to the problem? We have to see it. Ronald! 
And the Air Express Company has no idea either. Hold it! If you'd used Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. Federal tracks your package with scanners from where it's picked up uh -huh. to where it's delivered. Uh -huh. Giving you its exact status within 30 minutes or your money back. Uh -huh. Next time, send it Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? I had no idea Federal did that. Absolutely no idea! Back to that fumble on the first play of the second half, the first offensive play for the Cowboys. Listen. But the official, of course, said he blew the whistle. He did blow the whistle. Yeah, but he blew the whistle after the fumble, not right. before the fumble. They can think up a reason for most things after it happens, but, uh, of course, that one worked out anyway. The Giants got the ball in the next play, and, and they didn't do anything with it and missed a field goal, so we're back to even. Nothing's happened. No one was hurt. No one was helped. And we start at the same spot again. It, it was all inconclusive. First and 10 Cowboys at their own 34. Giants leading 10-7 with just over 12 minutes left to play third quarter. Dorset goes in motion. Back to Walker. Herschel Walker gets to about the 35. He might have gotten a yard, but that is all. Burt and Carson. You know, we had that good sound down there in the field. You could hear Jim Burt unload. <laughs> you know, as you're running down, you're kind of bringing your load with you. You run like this, and then when you get there, when you got to get you, you bend your knee, and boom, you unload it. And he unloaded it. You could hear it. Yep. Burt got that uniform any tighter. It would be uh, like a tattoo. Well, he's getting that six where from the back where it darn near joins the four in the front. Second and nine. Balls at the 36. The Lord chase quickly. He was looking for Walker. Carson was with him, but he didn't have enough blockers back there with him. George Martin was right in his face. You know, Pat, I see Danny White is back on the sideline. He's right there in front of Tom Landry. In fact, he may be giving signals. He has that right wrist in a cast. There he is. Danny White was hit by Banks on a blitz. Nobody picked up Banks. White suffered a broken wrist. He is out for a long time. 39. Lower out of the spread. They're showing that blitz again from the safety side. He got by three defenders, Lawrence Taylor being one of them. They had three guys, and he just split the middle and lunged, and I think he did get the first down. Watch the end of this. He gets by George Martin there. Watch right here. He fakes best. There's three guys. One, two, three. He goes right between all three of them. Terry Kennard shaking up just a bit on the play. That's a good effort by Pelour. Kennard seems to be okay now, walking back to the defensive huddle. That was the first down. Yes. That's a heck of a run. You know, usually you see quarterbacks, you know, they'll slide and they'll do that stuff or they'll go out of bounds. The Lord just not only kept it in bounds, but he took on three. Of course, we saw him earlier today uh, block on a play and block Lawrence Taylor. Cowboy first down at their own 44. Sherrard is split wide to the right. The Lord goes to work to Tony Hill. By Perry Williams, just as soon as he caught it. But a gain of seven or eight, maybe. Clock running, third quarter. Giants up by three. You know, when you see a guy like Pelora do what he's doing, the amazing thing about it is really Danny White got all the practice this week. And uh, he hasn't got the practice, and he has to come off the bench and be as cool and as calm and collected as he is. Second and two call it. It's Dorsett and Newsom, and this is Dorsett. About a yard shy of the first. It'll bring up third and one. Lawrence Taylor was the man who tripped up Dorsett. Irv 
Cross, I know, was down on the field before the game when Dorsett first came out of the locker room. And Irv asked him how he felt, and Tony said, I'm about 85%. And I was talking to some of the Cowboy representatives before, and they were saying during practice, he suffered a little bit of a muscle strain, not the ankle, not the knee, but just because he hadn't been able to work, he had a problem with a hamstring. Walker has taken his place, third one. Walker flags all over the place, and Walker is finally taken out of bounds, but there's going to be a penalty down. Walker got seven. It's against the Cowboys. It's holding. Hey, and Mark Collins for the Giants came up from that cornerback position, took on Walker. Walker kept going, but Collins gave him a pretty good lick. Just didn't wrap his arms. Mark Collins. As you pointed out earlier, John, just a rookie, but he has talent. He's going to be a player. Holding, offense, number 85, repeat the down, third down. Thornton Chandler is number 85. It's right there in the bottom left of the picture. You see it right there. That's a takedown. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I like that block. The guy in the bottom of that was Lawrence Taylor. Maybe holding, but it's still pretty good. That's a good old. That's a guy they like that Thornton Chandler very much. Tony Hill split wide to the left. Ballure going that direction. And it has Tony Hill. I'll tell you, that is an outstanding throw. 32 yards. You know, it's one of those things. There's Perry Williams, number 23. It's that double zone. You see, he's hitting, hitting. Now he has help deep. So you got the safety coming over deep, and he hits it over Williams, and right there in front of number 27, Herb Welch. That is a good throw. I mean, that's, that's a perfect throw where if that ball's not complete, it's out of bounds. That ball will never be intercepted. That brings up first down Cowboys at the giant 25. 8.40 left to play third quarter. Rafferty out first. It's Dorsett and Newsom, and now it's Dorsett deep. Fumble! He almost lost it. He juggled it and got it back. Leonard Marshall tackled him for a loss of three. That was almost Dallas disaster. Hey, Dorsett had good hands. I've, uh, the Cowboys have always done that, where they have their running back going towards the line of scrimmage and catching a pitch. And I always thought that was a difficult thing. Because you see, you're coming into the ball as you're catching it. And he bobbled it right there, but he had enough strength in his hands to hold on to it. That brings up second and 13 from the Giant, 28. That's Chandler in motion. Bloor gets it outside to Newsom, and Newsom is hit. And did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Harry Carson was shadowing him. It's a loss of two, as a matter of fact. You, you know, that's the same thing. Perry Williams coming on the blitz. You see him right there, 23. He leaves the receiver out there, then he comes on the blitz. No one blocked him, but at least Pelore could get that pass off. It's been a very effective maneuver for the Giants all day long when they bring those cornerbacks or their safety men up on the outside, third and 15. This is Tony Hill, slip wide to the right, right down at the bottom. Lower out of the spread. Walker pulled up, and Lower thought he was going to keep going. Lasker was the nearest giant defender. That'll bring up a fourth down. Do you try with Septian again? I would think so. I don't know. You know, it's hard from up here to tell what that wind is doing right. down there. And we've seen it do some funny things and cause knuckleballs and all that. So I think it's based on that. Of course, there's the answer right there. They are going for it. They aren't going for the field goal. I mean, they're going for the first down. Right. Septian has missed two in this direction. And so on fourth down, the Cowboys will go for the first down. That ball, when it's thrown, has 
been behaving in a very strange way. Pelour says he can't hear, and he walks away. He'll stop the clock with seven minutes and one second left third quarter. You know, that's the toughest thing with that shotgun. You usually go to the shotgun on a big play situation, third and long, and the home crowd is always against the offense. In fact, now the Cowboys have time to think about it. They're going for a punt, I think. I think they're putting in their punting team. They are. Saxon, number four, just came out. It's fourth and 15. Well, Tom Landry probably thought that we can't kick a field goal into this thing. I don't want my quarterback, if we can't get a good snap and a good cadence, I don't want to run a play. So let's punt it, try and get him inside the 10, and play strong defense and get a turnover. Fourth and 15. The ball is at the giant 30. If they try to go with Septian, it would be what 47 yards away and that would be pretty difficult see if they kick it in the end zone they only pick up 10 yards the Giants keep their regular defense in. see the Giants keep their regular defense plus Phil McConkie because what they're doing is they're going to play fourth down defense they're Except not going to be you know they're not going to be the situation where they can have a, uh, a fake here Except for McConkie and a couple of other guys, this is the regular giant defensive unit. I see Jeff Hostetler, number 15 out there. Yeah, you wonder what he's doing, the, the backup quarterback, the third string giant quarterback. I don't know. Are they going to throw it if they ever get it? Saxon will find out in a hurry. It's fourth and 15. Saxon standing back at about uh, the giant 45. They've made up their mind what they want to do. The officials still discussing things. Clock still stays where it was. 701 left third quarter. It's the Giants 10, the Cowboys 7. Summerall, John Madden, we're at the Meadowlands Giant Stadium. Jeff Rohr. He's number 50. Some problem with the clock, and that's the reason for the delay. Saxon. Sidelines and let's see where they mark it. At about the eight and a half yard line, just shy of the nine. The punt is only 21 yards, but still reasonably effective. A 35 millimeter automatic one touch from Nyko. Automatic film load. Automatic focusing. Automatic flash. The Nikon One Touch. It puts great photography at everybody's fingertips. talks about the power of Colt 45. You know, I, uh, I've always heard about the power of Colt 45, but I was never sure exactly what that meant, so I got something to find out for myself. Hey, Billy. You free tonight? Works every time. The power of Colt 45. It works every time. Five feet, seven inches of pure flesh. A man who cuts back to cut loose. Joe Morris leads the Giants against the Eagles next Sunday on CBS Sports.
The Giants 10, Dallas 7, 6.55 left third quarter. Next week, the Bears play Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's winning so far today. The Bears, John, seem to be, I don't know if it's internal or whatever, what kind of strife it is, but they don't seem to be as dominating as they were last year. Well, of course, when they have all their players in there, I think they will be. I think, you know, they're one team with Jim McMahon. I think they're another team without him. And I, I talked to Jim McMahon's attorney just the other night. He told me McMahon right now feels better than he has all season. I heard he's not going to start today. Yeah, but but then I also heard that he's, he's better physically than he's been, so I don't know. Here is Otis Anderson. Anderson carries some Cowboys. Tomorrow night, I met uh, Steve Fuller. The word we got was going to start at quarterback tomorrow night against the Rams for the Bears, but we'll just have to wait and see. I wouldn't bet on it. I wouldn't either. Of course, we don't bet anyway. No, you know these field goal kickers, you know, they don't get a lot of credit. You guys don't, you know, other than you who used to be a kicker. I mean, you don't give them. But really, the difference in this game has just been the kickers. Septien 0 for 2 and Allegre 1 for 2. That's the difference. Morris back in the game with Carthon now and a gift to Joe Morris. And this time, that play that had been so successful earlier is stuff for maybe a yard. Hegman was there. The Dallas defense in 1986. The opponents have been held to under 200 passing yards the last five games. Giants got 260 in the first. They have changed their defensive philosophy a little bit too. They don't blitz as much as they used to. Third and two. Look to Morris or look to Sims to throw. Look to Morris. He's close. Some of those guys are having their best years. They say like Everson Walls is having his best year and Ron Fellows and Michael Downs. I think that's the reason for it. One thing about, you know, these two safeties, Bill Bates and Downs, they're really involved in the run defense. Watch Bates come flying in there to finish it off. In fact, he finished his own guy off. <laughs> Gene Lockhart. Carson again got a good lead block for Morris, and that's what cleared the way for the first down. At their own 20. They lead by three. Sims goes back to throw. Brooks is the man there. Big Kevin coming off a bad knee. Gets the Cowboys' third sack of the day on Phil Sims. I tell you, that's why the Cowboys are going to be better. They got Kevin Brooks back. They got Don Smirick back. Watch, watch him here. Brooks is going to come from the outside. You see, he gets inside of Brad Benson. He takes an inside move, and he's a big guy. You know, he's like six foot six, 275, 280 pounds. And when you get an inside on a tackle, it's tough for him to get you back. Vince Warren wide left. This is Morris again. And Morris speeds out to just outside the 20. Not Michael Downs knocked him down, but he got back. To the original line of scrimmage after a gain of 10. The Saints continue to lead San Francisco in the third quarter, 17-10. Third down in about nine. Maybe eight. Dutton is out. Smearig is in. John Madden was just talking about him a minute ago. Tony Galbraith. In the giant backfield with Phil Sims. Sims has the time that he needs, and he almost had Phil McConkey, but he couldn't hold on. Manny Hendricks on the defense. Bill Bates was over there, too. They're using him more in coverage now. You know, he's a beauty, isn't he? He got that, that finger, you know, that left finger, left ring finger. He has four pins in it. So he's playing with that. Then he hurt his ankle. Remember in Denver, he hurt his ankle. They got on the airplane after the game to put ice on it, and they put dry ice. And he burned his whole ankle. He had the size of a softball. It was a horrible-looking thing. Yeah, they couldn't drive it. He kept the finger going, the ankle. Landetta gets off a good kick and chases Banks all the way back to his 25, where he handles. And Banks is down. Good coverage by the Giants. Mark Collins was the first man down. A 54-yard punt by Landetta. 3.41 left third quarter. 
John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. Exactly how much money do you make? What are you worth? There is nothing more personal than the subject of money. That's why Smith Barney will have no truck with investments that aren't sensitive to your circumstances. That's why clients stay clients. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem Christie to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you San Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Civic four-door sedan that's back into its slow Last, there's a roomy trunk. Next to last, room for adults in back. Then a comfortable driver's seat. And up front, a low hood for better visibility. Now you've got something to look forward to. Carolina takes on a Clemson team with players who believe in Razzle Dazzle and fans who believe in Razzmatazz or see Stanford meet UCLA next Saturday on CBS Sports. 2.30 Eastern next Saturday, CBS Sports presents college football with the North Carolina Tar Heels against Clemson. Both teams in the midst of the fight for the ACC championship or some of you will see a Pac-10 match between Stanford and UCLA. Right now, we're looking at Giant Stadium. And just a minute ago. Here's what the defenders do. There's Ernie Stautner. See, Tom, now look at Bates. He's saying, hey, Ernie, look, I got this, Ernie. Then Ernie's showing it. Lockhart's pointing to the guy and how they're going to get him the next time. Valores back to throw and quickly does to Tony Hill. First down, Dallas at the 42. Reasons back there to make the stop. By the time Ernie gets through with that blackboard, it looks like one of your chalkboards. I know it, yeah. There's guys going all over, defensive guys going, offensive guys, chalk flying, dust flying. And when coaches talk to players, there's a lot of, if he does this, you do this. And if you he know, goes there. Yeah, yeah, you go there. He goes, you go. He comes, you come. A lot of that stuff. First down, Cowboys. Handoff is to Walker, and he is straight ahead close to midfield. Jim Burt on the bottom of the pile. Walker got about five, maybe six. Okay, if this is what it looks like in the middle of the line. Watch number 64 Burt there going against number 64 Rafferty. Rafferty does a nice job, fires out. They go helmet to helmet, keep those knees going. I'll tell you, that's a good job by Rafferty. They got the, if you're going to run against the three-man line, you have to get movement on the nose tackle. That time, Tom Rafferty did. Walker got six at second and four. It's now Walker and Newsom behind Palour. He fakes and is going to throw. Gets it outside to Newsom. Newsom is hit just about at the point where the first down marker would be. It's going to be close to a first reasons in Carson's. Put uh, a little leather, a few hats on him. You know, Steve Pelour has quietly been having himself quite a game here. He's 16 for 22, 207 yards he's thrown for. That's coming out there cold, too, and not expecting to be there. You know, everyone has confidence in, in Steve Pelour. I think one of the things is he has so much confidence in himself. Third and short. The Giants put in big Eric Dorsey, take out Martin. Baldinger at tight end on the left side. That's Crosby in motion. Hand off to Walker, and he has the Dallas first down. Banks on the bottom of the pile, but Walker got just enough. You know, the other day we were watching the, the tapes with Otis Anderson. We are talking about how big Walker looks. And he says, well, it's the pads he wears. He says he wears big pads, and he has special pads coming down his back. Now, in the front, they're about normal, 
but in the back they run just about all the way down to his kidneys. So his, his shoulder pads go from the neck and the back all the way down darn near to the waist. You know, he hasn't been hurt that much in his history, but he has had a bad shoulder over the years. And now Pelora has to take a timeout. He didn't like what he saw. And so with 46 seconds left to play in the third quarter, the Giants leading 10-7. The Cowboys use a timeout. If we could get our orders when out. When you talk sir. with Hewlett Packard about your networking problems, we listen. Now, my people in the sales office over here can't communicate with the factory. I've already talked to Ford. Because while we have all the hardware and software, we can't give you a networking solution if we do all the talking. So before we ask what if, we find out what's wrong. We need to be cost effective. I have a suggestion. What if I took a look at your manufacturing floor? I can find out. One popular approach to car design. It's an approach Honda has never taken. Perhaps that's why the Civic hatchback with its low hood line and long roof line is so distinctive. Very tasty. Glacier Bay, Alaska and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan King Crab. Sweet, fresh, and big. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. And old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Bye. suddenly becoming a little difficult to get by. Washington against Green Bay and Minnesota and Detroit. And then John Madden and I will be in Philadelphia at Veterans Stadium when the Giants face the Eagles. That's next Sunday here on CBS. Now we look back again at Dick Nolan and Ernie Stotner. They have a big meeting every time the defense comes out. I mean, they get down there and they have serious meeting time down there. 46 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Giants leading the Cowboys by three. They show a blitz again, and Pelour gets it outside to Newsom, and he's taken down in a hurry by Andy Hedden, number 54. They had that safety cornerback blitz scheme working again. Yeah, you look at this game, and you see what it's been here. The Giants rushing 161 yards, and then the passing of the Cowboys, 194 yards. The passing of the Giants, darn near non-existence with only 36 yards. Second down and nine, they're at the Giant 45. Nine seconds now, eight left in the third quarter. They've got to hurry. Hurry. Not going to get it off. That's the end of the third quarter. Again, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants 10, the Dallas Cowboys 7, and we now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. There's money hidden in your home, and the hungry bankers can help you find it and put it to use. The Mid-Atlantic Home Equity account frees up all that hidden cash. Like pension. Nothing to it for a hungry banker. If you call your bank when the bank's closed, will they answer? The hungry bankers will. Just dial 1-800-MID-BANK with your question about a Midlantic product or service right now. Atlantic, may I help you? See? The hungry bankers never close. Listen to the heartbeat of America. When you know what you want, put yourself in today's Chevy Cavalier and listen to your heartbeat. The heartbeat of America. Chevrolet. In Chicago, a windy city, the word around town is German. 
Thanks. In Boston, where all parties are not tea parties, the word around town is German. Max! And in San Francisco, the city where people leave their hearts, the word around town is German. Max. Max, the number one imported German beer. Did her husband lead a secret life Monday at 4.30? CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota, builder of top, powerful, reliable trucks, Toyota, and by MCI, communications for the next hundred years. That's number all, John Madden at Giant Stadium. The Cowboys, second and nine at the Giant 45. Giants leading by a field goal. Steve Pelour, the quarterback. Outside to Tony Hill. Slip one tackle. Gets down inside the 40 to about the 37 before Jim Burt comes out from in the middle of things and makes the stop. I'll tell you, Crawford Kerr, though, the right guard of the Cowboys, really leveled Lawrence Taylor coming out of a spin. Let's see if you can see 68 coming down there and getting him right there. That Crawford Kerr doesn't look like a Dallas Cowboy. He is 6'4", and who knows how much. He got a lot of stuff going. He got the beard. He got that big, strong body. You know, looked like he'd be a redskin or something. Pushes trucks uphill. Third and two. Pulua back to throw. He might come out of there with this one. He doesn't get the first down. They knock him out of bounds. Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson in pursuit. Now let's see what the Cowboys do. They have the wind at their back. Still. It would be a long way out for Septian. Well, I'm sure they're going to do some kind of kick. I think they're going to go for the field goal, Pat. Septian went out. It was a fake. Septian faked and then came back. Here comes Saxon. I think Septian wanted to try that with the win. It would have been uh, 56 yards. Well, maybe he just wanted to fake it. Saxon is in nevertheless and McConkie is back standing at the giant 15 now retreating a little bit Saxon is not one of those who'd be inclined to fake it now and McConkie was going up there talking to his group just to make sure what kind of return it is you have three kinds of return middle right or left took too much time the 30 second clock expired and they'll back him up five you know they could have done that on purpose to give him a better angle to get the ball inside the 20. You know that that'll just mark it back five yards you know it'll be interesting i wonder what would happen if the giants just decline that penalty number four offense fourth down can they i don't think they can i think it must be automatic but that, you, know, you know, they were, the Cowboys were trying to get back a little, to give Saxon a little better angle to get the ball out of bounds. I would have declined it. They did have that choice. Straight up by Saxon. Bad, bad kick. And did that ever backfire? Down by Jesse Penn. Saxon disgusted with himself. A one yard punt. One yard. The Saints still leading San Francisco. New England has taken the lead over Atlanta. Tampa Bay beating Buffalo. And Miami shutting out Houston. That's fourth quarter. Pittsburgh over Green Bay and Green Bay in the fourth. We're in the fourth here at Giants Stadium. And the Giants are up by two to give us to Morris. And Morris is hit behind the line and hit hard. Knocked back by Emerson Wall to Michael Downs. Just to continue the rundown of scores. Since 
Cincinnati has come from behind to take the lead over Detroit now. Cleveland beating Indianapolis. The Eagles shutting out St. Louis. Second and 10 Giants at their own 38. Clock running with 13 and a half minutes left to play in the game. Giants up by three. Moat in motion. Sims back to throw. Nothing doing. Intended for Morris. So far, other than the fact that the Giants are ahead by three, I suppose the big story would have to be that Danny White was hit on a blitz by Carl Banks here at Giants Stadium. And Danny White suffered a broken wrist. He'll be out minimum four, maybe six weeks. Six turnovers have led to ten points. Joe Morris has 142 yards. He's been the Giants story. Pelour, I suppose, would have to be the Dallas story. Third down and ten. Giants at their own 39. McConkie in motion. Sims operating out of the spread. Firing deep for McConkie, and he fell down and down go the flags. He tripped up. Two flags down. Hendricks was the man back there with it. I don't know if he could have gotten to the ball or not. It might be lucky that he tripped. Well, the ball will go against the Cowboys, and I think it's against number 45, Manny Hendricks. Pass interference. Defense, number 45, first down. Hey, as you say, I don't know if that ball bit that, that ball would be completed anyway. But you see, as McConkey starts to come out, he starts to go outside, and then Hendricks tripped him up. I think his left foot got caught up with McConkey's left foot. They come back in a hurry to Morris, and Morris breaks out of the tackle. Gets down. It'll be first and goal Giants. Downs knocked him out of bounds. In a hurry to Morris. Joe Morris is injured. I think he's down there just trying to get his breath. A gain of 22 for number 20. That's been the success. That's what they said we have to do. I think with their offense, the way their passing game is, offensively, they have to win their game with Joe Morris. Morris goes out. Otis Anderson comes in. First and goal, Giants. At the Cowboys 7. And I'll bet you Joe Morris is back in before this drive is over. I have him back in there. I know that. Sims gets to Anderson. Anderson is hit by Eugene Lockhart. He got to about the 5 for a gain of 2. Morris over on the sideline. Pat Hodgson in the red jacket. Ready to put him back in. As is Parcells. And there he comes. Yeah, he has to come back in. He is a dominating player. The passing game really isn't what they'd hoped for. And if they're going to do it, they have to do it by either giving it to Joe Morris or at least having the threat of Joe Morris in there. Second and goal from the five. Sims to Morris. And Morris, touchdown. From five yards out, that's his second of the day. Morris saw it, felt it, and made that cutback. 
That's good blocking in the line. And another one of those reads we were talking about that Morris makes at top speed. Robert Levette takes it inside the 10 for the Cowboys. Flag is down. Back up field, and so is Levette. Andy Hedden made a stop. Holding against the Cowboys. Just another, another typical New York sports week. I don't know where else it's typical. Last Sunday, the Jets beat the Saints right here. Monday, the Mets won the World Series. Monday night, the Giants beat the Redskins. Tuesday, they had a ticker tape parade for the Mets. And then the NBA started on Friday. The Nets beat the Knicks. There is, of course, hockey going on, the Islanders and the Rangers. If you're looking for sports, you're in the right place. And if you're looking for perhaps the most dominant figure in New York sports in the last week, certainly, You'd look at number 20, Joe Morris. Yeah, think of that. You know, they played on Monday night and then back on Sunday. Think of the week that Joe Morris has had. 181 yards on Monday night. 12.03 left to play in the game. Palura, the quarterback. Has some time and gets it out of dropped by Newsom, and there's a flag down. Penalty marker down. There is Joe Morris, and here's what he's done this week. Yeah, that's not the last two weeks. That's just this week, starting on Monday and ending today. That's 409 yards in a week. So some people don't do that in a career. <laughs> that's right. Penalty marker was down. Let's see what it's about. Illegal contact. Defense, number 53. Five-yard penalty. First down. First down, Cowboys at their own 15. And 11.58 left to play. It's Danny White who broke his wrist earlier in the civilian close. Allure has taken over. Walker and Newsom on first down. Allure back to throw. To Walker. Walker still on his feet. And Walker finally taken down by Kenny Hill. But he gets the ball into giant territory. He is hard to knock down, a gain of 39. You know, probably the best hitter in the secondary is Terry Kennard. He got there with Walker about the same time, and he bounced right off him. Look at him. He's still holding on that wrist. It starts off with good pass protection. You know, Mark Tuane starts out to get Taylor, and then he comes in on a double team with Marshall, and then back to get Taylor. You know, that's the thing you have to handle. You have to handle that Taylor Marshall thing. But watch, watch that collision there. Kennard comes over, gets there at the same time, and Walker still holds on. And hurt Kennard, although he's still in the game. He's still rubbing his arm in the secondary. Four seconds left on the 30-second clock. They finally give it to Walker. Walker rips down almost for a first down before Reasons gets him down. Pickup of nine, just shy of ten. You remember when we were watching the tapes with Otis Anderson the other night? Uh, uh, you know, he looked at Herschel Walker and he says, that's what it does. And what happened is he was out as a wide receiver, and the defensive back was about 20 yards off him. And I said, what's that? And he said, that's what speed does. And he's got it. But he's... Stung a little bit himself now. They're bringing him back to the bench. Walker, second and one. And they give to Newsom, and Newsom is around the right side and inside the 35 for a Cowboy first down. Harry Carson tripped him up along with Kenny Hill. Here's Herschel Walker, and they're looking at his left foot, it would appear. Well, that was a good collision. You know, we talked about Kennard, uh, you know, bouncing off and hurting his wrist, but I think that I think that Herschel Walker felt that one, too. And then he had to carry the ball, or did carry the ball the next play. First and ten Cowboys at the Giant 33. The Giants are hit by ten points. Renfro relays the information out to Tony Hill. Marshall is after Pelour. Pelour fires downfield incomplete, very nearly picked off. Intended for Renfro, it was Mark Collins. I think 
think they're going to give him a sack on that bat. I in think the they're ruling that he was in the grass. That rule comes back to haunt strong quarterbacks like a Pelour is. Watch Leonard Marshall, number 70, go around the outside. He's coming like a runaway train. And then right there was the grass before he threw the ball. I agree with that one. Yep. Watch this. Taylor is going to start inside. Marshall starts outside. Here he comes. 290 pounds. He goes. And it was George Martin who had him in the grass. Second and 14. Dorsey is in the giant defensive scheme now. That's Winfrey in motion. And it's Pelour back to throw. And does for Tony Hill. And he has him at about the 24. Close to a first down. Terry Kennard, the defender. You know, if you can block a Lawrence Taylor, and he blitzed on that time, Mark Two and they did block him, then you have time to do this against this secondary. I think that they were exposed a little Monday night against the Redskins. But if you can block him, if you can do this, watch 71, two and they turn out and block Lawrence Taylor. Without letting him get that big push on your quarterback, if you can do that, then you can throw against this team. Third and one. Clock running with just over, or just less than eight and a half minutes left. Giants up 17-7. That's Walker, and he's got enough for the first down. The information we received was that he turned his ankle. They retaped it, and Walker came back. Yeah, I'll tell you, that was just a second effort, though, too, wasn't it? It looked like initially that they played good short yardage defense over there, and then Walker just kept moving and driving those legs. Because watches him as he hits in there to the right side. It looks like right there that he stopped. You see how he made that spin, made that turn, and got the first down. He stays in the backfield. And Pelour is being chased. Tries to get the ball to Newsom, but they made the field very small for Pelour. For an NFL update, let's go to Brent Lesberger in New York. Well, Pat and John, it appears as though the New England Patriots are going to keep the heat on the New York Jets here today. Watch Irving Fryer. He's going to return this punt for a touchdown against the Atlanta Falcons. And, Pat, this will throw the NFC West up in the air because New Orleans is holding on against San Francisco. They could be 4-5 and five if they win, and Atlanta will lose a game if the Patriots win it. Let's go back to Pat and John. So things are very interesting as we head into the second half of the season of 1986. Seven and a half minutes, 7.35. Left to play second and 10 Cowboys at the Giant 23. Handoff. That's Dorsett. And Dorsett is in the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. From 23 yards away, Kenny Hill still down in the end zone. Cowboys are back in it. Here they got Herschel Walker, and a lot of the talk is that Herschel Walker, Dorsett, because of the injury, because Walker's been a little forgotten man, but he still has this. When he sees a hole and he can burst that thing, he has great eyes, great vision, and great acceleration. Hill would be 85%, but that that was he was 100% on that one. That's still better than most. Set the end for the extra point with Pelour holding. 7.29 left to play. Septian's extra point is good at 17.14. And it's a three-point game one more time. Once again, they're working on the left ankle of Herschel Walker down on the sideline. Not everyone got a vacation this summer. This fall, you can still get great low fares to more places on the biggest bargain airline, United. I got a vacation. Have a nice shower, Capricorn. I'm not just flying. Yeah. I'm flying friendly skies. I'm out of there. Looking out for number one. Toyota One Ton. No truck in its class holds more. It can even out carry any mid sized truck. Looking out for number one. Who could ask for anything more? 
push your old antifreeze another year, and you might end up pushing your luck. Weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad, while a Prestone radiator looks this good. So don't push your luck, change it. Once a year with fresh Prestone. You finally get the answer, and now you can't wait to tell someone. Here at Hewlett Packard, we never stop thinking about how our business computing equipment can be used to solve your company's problems. It's the Hewlett Packard way of doing things. We're always asking, what if? I've got it. They need easy access to their database, right? What if we use the personal productivity? Five feet, seven inches of pure flesh. A man who cuts back to cut loose. Joe Morris leads the Giants against the Eagles next Sunday on CBS Sports. 7.29 left to play. And the Cowboys leading, uh, the Giants leading by three. Watch Andy Head in here, Pat. He's free. Pelour turns like it's a pass. Dorsett comes this way. Hedden comes free. He's looking at Pelour, and he runs right by him. Watch 54 there. Andy had no one blocks him. He's free. He thinks he has a quarterback sack. He hands it to Dorsett. Dorsett runs right by him and in the end zone. Septian will kick off. Back deep for the Giants. Mark Collins and Phil McConkey. Line drive kickoff to McConkey at the five. Very sure handed. And out to the 25. Johnny Holloway. Made the stop. 20 yard return. You know, we talked about the WD 40 getting the ball in Walker and Dorsett's hands 40 times. The Cowboys are coming close. They have it 26 times. Go 211 yards and a touchdown. That touchdown just a minute ago by Dorsett from 23 yards away. Miller comes out to the right. That's up by three, and Morris will go to work again. And does. Hit down by Eugene Lockhart. You know something, this for the Giants is becoming like a run scrimmage. The last time Phil Sims completed a pass was with about five minutes to go in the second quarter. Morris has been their story. There's Andy Hedden right there. He's still thinking about that. How could I not be blocked and have the guy run right by me for a touchdown? I have to see the back. Sims is 5 out of 17, one interception, and he's got to put it up here somewhere. On long yardage, he goes back to Bavaro, who is wide open. And Bavaro struggles for the first down in the arms of Michael Downs. A gain of 10, and Sims had had a long dry spell before that one. I know it, and you know, a, a couple of those completions, remember Bavaro had a completion and fumbled, and so did Moa. At that time, Bavaro got in the open, and Sims found him. A gain of 10, and a giant first down. Six minutes and eight seconds left to play. The Giants leading Dallas 17-14. First and 10 at their own 37. Back to Morris. Morris to the outside, and Morris good yardage again. Rod Fellows finally got him down, a gain of seven. And he looks, in this last week, New England 22-10 now over Atlanta, almost impossible to stop. Well, you know, he has that thing where he can go that full speed. He has the balance. And, you know, it was funny. They were saying the other day that, that against Washington Monday night, he carried the ball 31 times, but he really never got hit. It wasn't a tough 31 yards. I mean, 31 times. Of course, that's easy for say. Now he has 27. And I don't know if this has been a tough one or not. I don't know either. I can't remember as we look back that he's really been hammered. Yeah, you don't see him take those real tough collisions. This time he only got about a yard. It'll bring up a third down situation. 17-14, the Giants lead. As you look over on the sideline, at nose tackle Jim Burt. Well, he's still talking about that draw, too, with Dorsett. You know, Hedden is saying he ran right by me, and, and he's saying, yeah, I should have it. They hate to have any nose tackle, hates to have a draw run against him. Because that's kind of his number one responsibility. Third and one, and a big third and one. They're seven out of 12, and again, you have to figure 
Some sort of an effort to Morris with Cartham leading. Well, they were in the huddle a long time. It could be a play pass. Down to five seconds on the 30-second clock. Morris around the outside. He is hit, and I don't think he got the first down. It depends on where they mark it. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Well, if they don't make it, it was because of Everson Walls. He came up and he finished off that run for Morris. Watch you see Bates up there, number 40. He's going to take on the guard, Chris Godfrey. Now watch right there, Walls come up. See how he yeah. finished that run off? If he didn't get it, which he didn't get it, then that was because of a great tackle by Everson Walls. Now what do the Giants do? It's fourth down. He didn't get it. And it looks like they're going to punt. Here comes Landetta. 30-second clock is still running with now 16 seconds on the clock. They might go on one of those long counts here and hope the Cowboys jump offside. Well, that's easier to do with your regular offense. I would have given that a try before I punted, I think. The long count. Yeah. Banks back deep for Dallas. Signals fair catch. Makes it at the Dallas 15. They are 85 yards away. Touchdown. 3.33 left to play. Cowboys have two timeouts remaining. The Winning Edge, brought to you by Seagram's Golden Wine Cooling. The Winning Edge can come from believing that you will win. Roger Staubach took the field with that kind of confidence. Game after game, the Cowboys knew that Staubach would find a way to win. In his 11-year career, the Cowboy quarterback brought Dallas from behind to win 23 times in the final period, 14 times in the last two minutes or overtime. Confidence gave Roger Staubach and the Cowboys the winning edge. Fancy restaurant, candlelight. Is this business or pleasure? Which do you prefer? Stick to business. People are watching. Of course they are. This is a commercial to prove this is the perfect time for Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet, and it's dry. And it's Seagram's, I heard. What happens after the commercial? Pleasure. What do you have in mind? You get to drink it. New Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet, and it's dry. Teach your children well. Their skill will tell how life will go by and show their own dreams the one they'll pick is the one they'll know by Nothing's more important than teaching children. That's why more schools teach on Apple than any other computer. And know they love you. Three thirty-three left to play. And it's 17-14. Next week. The Bears against Tampa Bay, and they shook some things up down there, didn't they? Well, they sure did. They got rid of some of those veteran players. I think they surprised everyone. That'll be the first game, and then we will be at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia next week for the NFC Eastern Division matchup between the Giants and the Eagles, who've been playing forever, it seems like. Well, you know, you have all those rivalry games, and I think that's what's great about this division. We have one here today, the Giants and the Cowboys. I mean, this is big rivalry football. Last week you had the Giants and the Redskins. That's real. Next week it's the Eagles. And, you know, and they keep playing each other. I think that's what makes this division so good. And this has been good. Pelour, the quarterback, and Herschel Walker and Timmy Newsom are behind him. They're at their own 15, and Pelour is back to throw. And does outside to Walker. And he gets about eight before Harry Carson brings him down. You know what's going to be interesting here, Pat, what the Giants do on defense. You know, do they do what they did just before the half? Do they do what they did against the Redskins? Or do they keep some pressure on Pelour? I would think the answer to be would keep the pressure on Pelour. Sherrard and Hill come wide to the left. And it looks like they're going to do just exactly what you suggested. Keep some pressure. Taylor waits. Lure has time and he gets the ball out and complete enough for a first down. It's to Timmy Newsom. I don't know what Lawrence Taylor was doing on that play. I mean, you either go or you don't go, but don't stand there in no man's land. I have no idea. Watch 56 here. I have no idea what this is. 
You either get back and you cover, or you get after the guy throwing the ball. He's out there in no man's land. Herschel Walker again limped off the field, and Dorsett took his place. First down, Cowboys, their own 28. Again, Taylor hesitates. Ball to Cosby, and Cosby comes down with it. Clock still runs. Kenny Hill was the defender, but it's a first down, Cowboys, a gain of 20. I'll tell you, when you have something, you need a big play. I still think Doug Cosby's a good guy to go to. You know, here he is, the eight-year veteran. He's been making big plays for eight years. Two minutes remaining in the game. Cowboys down to the Giants by three. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. A uh, pitcher of light. Bud Light. So if you want the list filling light beer with the first name and paste, don't just ask hey, for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring Whoa. out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. There's nothing like the feeling of reaching for the top, and there's nothing like the feeling of the good news disposable razor. Light, easy to handle, twin blades. It's a feeling you only get from Gillette. Good news from Gillette. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales. But since I've already got my Toyota, I'm just out looking for a game. I'll play. Who could ask for anything more? At Meineke Discount Mufflers, we get some pretty tough customers. I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. But we don't mind. I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler! Meineke's the nation's discount muffler leader, so you're not going to pay a lot. Our quality Everlast mufflers are priced from $18.93 to $26.95 installed. Ooh, I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. You're not going to pay a lot at Meineke. Millimeter. That's what's coming up tonight on CBS. 60 Minutes looks at the biggest child abuse case in history. Plus an Israeli war movie that's not your typical army training film. Following 60 Minutes, of course, it is Murder, she wrote. Starring Angela Lansbury. Followed by Something in Love, a CBS movie that takes a lighthearted look at love. Starring Tuesday Well, Ellen Burstyn, Eli Wallach, and Don Murray. All coming up tonight on CBS. Coming up right now on CBS is first and 10 Dallas at their own 48. Walker is back in the game, and now he's split wide to the right. Renfro on the slot. Tony Hill wide left. Pador to Walker, and he makes a diving catch. Collins up to make the tackle, a gain of five, maybe six for Walker, who's again limping. That's the thing about Walker, you know, is you can put him any place. You can put him fullback, halfback, wide receiver, put him any place, and he can come up with a big play. As you said, though, that left foot that he has taped there is really bothering him. Yeah. He's making those moves with a limp. Second and five. Pelour looking for some place to go. Chased by Marshall. Fires it incomplete in the direction of Tony Hill. And now the flag goes down. I don't know if they call that on Marshall or not. The Cowboys' sideline is saying it's on Marshall for roughness. I don't know. Watch Leonard Marshall, though, take off. He wanted to get him. Now, he hit him inbound. I don't think that should be. And you can hit the quarterback. You know, when he's running, he's a runner. It was in bounds. It could have been that they're going to say that he intentionally grounded it. It looked like he aimed it in the direction of Tony Hill. Tony Hill was in the area. Hey, we talked about Sherrard running 4-2. Intentional grounding? Yep. Loss of down and 10 yards on number 16. Second down. Let's watch it here in the chalkboard. We'll see him. He's going to come out here towards us. And we'll 
Let's see if there's anyone he's throwing to. Now he's sprinting out here to the sideline. Sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. And he throws the ball there. Now, I don't know. It looks like there's a defender there. I mean, a receiver there and a receiver here. I think there could have been someone to throw it to. That's a loss of down as well. It's third and 15, and they're backed up to their own 43. A minute, 22 remaining. Well, that's a bad call, too, because as we saw there, he had two guys to throw to. I mean, he got rid of the ball. Leonard Marshall was running about 4-1 coming after him. And he got rid of it, but he did have some blue shirts there. Malore had to take him away from the line of scrimmage because he couldn't hear. 17-14 Giants, third and 15, the ball at the 43, and a minute and 22 seconds left to play. They cannot operate out of the shotgun because of the noise. The Lord chased again by Marshall. He gets away from him. Downfield complete to Mike Sherrard, and that's enough for a first down Dallas. Mark Collins knocked him out of bounds. That also stops the clock with a minute 15 remaining. I'll tell you, that's a big play for Steve Pallor. Darn near a big play for Leonard Marshall. Watch him. He almost gets a sack. Pallor runs away from him, makes that completion to Sherrard, both feet inbound. Heck of a throw. I'll tell you, that's coming back after that penalty. That's right and the wrong penalty. A minute 15 still left on the clock. The Cowboys with two timeouts. The Giants have all of theirs. And this is what football is all about. I mean, oh, this man. Is, you know, when you get down there in the last two minutes and, you know, a field goal separates the team, one team going for it, the quarterback can't hear, the crowd's going crazy. That's what the NFL is all about. Gerard takes advantage of this to come over quickly to the sideline and talk to Danny White. Raffield set the end. Could put this into overtime. The only guy that'll talk to him is the other kicker, the punter, Mike Saxon. If they don't gain any more yards, it would be about a 55-yard field goal, 40, maybe 53 from here. Yeah, but it's first down, so yeah. unless... They get a sack. The Giants get a sack. I would think the Cowboys will gain some more yards. Gerard and Renfro come out wide to the left. And the crowd again is very, very vocal. And Pelour saying, I still can't hear. They can't check. The referee says, you got to play. Pelour is saying, I'm not going to until I can hear, until they can hear. And he just stands there. I think one of the big things here is getting Leonard Marshall blocked. They're he not going like to snap it. Possessed. They're not going to snap it until the crowd quiets down. And they have no intention of doing that. Bill Parcells. Anxious moments for him. Well, the home team is supposed to tell the crowd to calm down. Eventually, the referee will go over and ask Bill Parcells to tell the crowd. Cowboys standing around. You have to admire the poise of Steve Pelour. And now they're going to try to snap it again, and here comes the crowd volume again. And Pelour is saying, I just can't hear, nor can the wide receiver. Well, and the big thing is the offensive line that can't hear. about this thing. Well, they look mad. Rafferty again up over the ball. Now Pelour gets up under the center. That's Wellington Mara. The owners of the Giants. Pelour 
to throw. And here comes the blitz. They get it outside to Dorsett, and there's a penalty marker down. Dorsett inside the 20. Dorsett down inside the 10, but there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Mark Collins is going to be holding against Dallas. And I bet it's against Phil Posderick, too. We talked about that earlier. There's one thing that he's had a problem with, and it comes back to haunt you. They use some valuable time, nine seconds off that clock, and they're bringing it back. That was a screen pass. No one runs that better than Tony Dorsett. Holding, offense, number 75, repeat the down, first down. That takes him out of field goal range. And that is Phil Posderick. We'll see him right here. That's him in pass protection. That's who they call it on. See, he gets a little late start. It looks like he got his left hand in there, and you see him, he pulled down on George Martin. It'll be first and 20 at the Giant 46. A minute and six seconds left to play. Crowd again as loud as possible. Bellure outside Walker. Walker gets out of bounds at about the 42-yard line of the Giants. Greg Lasker tripped him up. Walker in obvious pain. He could hardly walk. Hey, one thing, the Giants are coming. You can see him bringing Lawrence Taylor. You can see him on the stunt. They aren't sitting there with a, a slow, soft three-man rush. They're bringing four. They're still trying to pressure Steve Pallor. A minute left to play. The Giants ahead by three. Second down and 16 for Dallas at the Giant 42. A minute exactly left. Cowboys with two timeouts left. Pelour sacked by Taylor. Lawrence Taylor took him down from behind. He never saw him. Six sacks. But there's a flag down on the play. There's a penalty marker down on the play, and it's against the Giants. in that area of pass defensive holding. Holding. Defense. First down. First down, Giant, first down Cowboys in Giant territory. The flag is about the 32-yard line. I think it had to be this on Perry Williams, Pat, because it was in the area of number 23. See where he had his hand on the back there? That's the only thing that I could see. Bill Parcells, obviously very anxious about the situation. Well, he should be because he had a sack. Lawrence Taylor came from that backside with a big rush on Pelour. They only used four seconds, and it's down to 56 seconds. With two timeouts remaining, the Giants with three. 56 seconds left to play. It's Dorsett and Walker in the backfield. Newsom also there. Here's Pelour back. Going deep and incomplete. Walker was the intended receiver, but he's limping so badly he just couldn't get there. So now there are 50 seconds left to go. Second and ten at the Giant 37. Giants up by three. Herschel Walker now coming back to the sideline. He just can't turn it on. Oh, he's, he's running. You know, that left ankle is bothering that left foot. In fact, he's running or walking like he has a rock in his shoe. Walker had nine catches for 148 yards until he just left. He'll be back or not. It's Robert Levette now in the backfield with Newsom. Screen pass to Newsom, but he's got a couple of blockers. Newsom down to about the giant 25, and the clock continues to run. And now they stop it with 40 seconds remaining. And there's a flag on the other side of the field. This is an officials game. 
Well, they're taking over. The officials are this last two minutes of the game. That one's against the Giants. And they're still discussing what option. That would be an automatic first down. Tony Dorsett, we've just been told from the sideline, has a strained knee. He had that problem going in. Walker has a tender ankle, and it's Robert Levette and Timmy Newsom in the Cowboy backfield now. I can see Dorsett on the sideline. Holding. He's really limping. Defense, number 25, penalty decline. It will be a first down. First down anyway. I think the Giants have to watch out for another screen pass. Dorsett made the big screen pass with a penalty. That last one was a screen pass to Newsom. I think that's one of the things that the Cowboys like to do in this area. That's the good news. The bad news is, is they don't have either Walker or Dorsett to do it with. Situation is 40 seconds remaining. First and 10. Cowboys have it at the Giant 26. Tony Hills put wide to the left. Lelore started in the spread, now goes back up under the center. Here come the Giants on a blitz. It's George Martin, and there's a penalty marker down again. Martin, all over Pelour. He never had a chance. Buzz Derrick is having a long day on this drive. He had the penalty, then he gets beat. Martin beats him. Here he is right here. Here's Buzz Derrick. Jordan Martin just comes right around him. Watch it. Buzz Derrick just got up slow. That's what it is. Then he had the holding. So that's use a double of hands. Dipper. Offense, number 75. Penalty decline. Second down. And that big sack again takes him out of field goal range. They've been in and out. Right. There's been five penalties on this drive. Bill Paz Derrick has two of them. Tony Hills foot wide to the left. It's second down at 25 at the Giant 41. And here they come again. Pelour is hit by Martin just as he got rid of it and could get nothing on it. Intended for Timmy Newsom. It's third and 25. I'll tell you, that's where the problem is coming from tonight right now. Watch George Martin again on Puzzler right around him. And Pelour can't step up to throw it. Watch him. He's getting a late start. Maybe he can't hear the snap count. Watch him right there. See, he's trying to step. And George Martin was right on his right arm. Like he's throwing out of a tunnel. 17-14. Giants lead with 33 seconds left to play. It's third down and 25. Dallas at the Giant 41. down again. Flag is down. Newsom is down to the 10. Renfro's calling a timeout. But let's see what the penalty is again. It's against Dallas. The sixth penalty on this drive. Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. It's a record. Gotta be. It's a record. The last two minutes on one drive, six penalties, NFL record. Illegal motion, offense, number 75. Repeat the down, third down. You know, that's Phil Posderic again, and we saw earlier where he was getting a late start. You know, that he got a late start on two times. That time he got an early start. You see, George Martin moved. As Derek went back, the defensive guy, after he moves, can get back. The offensive guy can. Third and 29. 27 seconds left to play. The Cowboys still have two timeouts. The Giants have all of theirs. He's chased again as Pelour. He gets the screen pass to Levette. And he is tripped up, and they'll have to take another timeout. And they do. That means that Dallas will have one remaining. the timeout 
situation. Raphael Septien over on the sideline. They're not close enough for him yet. 18 seconds remaining. Cowboys with one more timeout. Out of Septien's range at the moment. 18 seconds left to play. Dallas with one more timeout. So if they can get down closer, they can still stop it as you look at the Giants and their defensive unit. They're all huddling up on the sideline. That's like a basketball game. Septian is in the game. 18 seconds left on the clock. Would you think they try from here? I can't believe it. That would be what, 62 yards? Plus they have 18 seconds remaining and the timeout remaining. But it's fourth down. That has to be what it is. His career long is 53 yards. This would be 62. The NFL record, of course, is 63. And this would be where they're spotting it. 63. One thing, there's a good chance there could be a penalty on this play. He said, if we can beat our division teams twice, we can have a good record. If we're going to split, then it's not going to be as good a record. Yeah, it looks right, like John. today they're split. Pat Summerall saying so long for John Madden from Giant Stadium. Coming up next on the NFL Today, the postgame show with Brent Marsberger scores and highlights from around the league. Nobody has lower fares than United to more cities across this land. North to south, east to west, only United has low fares to all 50 states. You're not just flying, you're flying in friendly skies. Watch closely. You're looking at America's two leading premium beers. Because Miller High Life comes in a clear bottle, you probably think it's the lighter of the two. But life is full of surprises. You see, Miller High Life is brewed darker from this special and expensive roasted malt. Pour them for yourself. See the difference roasted malt can make. Then compare the taste, and you just might find out what a beer made the American way is all about. Miller High Life. Brighten your colors, sharpen your sound, with high-tech components designed to astound.
Welcome back to our studio. I'm Brett Musburger along with Irv Cross and Jimmy the Greek. What an exciting afternoon this has been around the National Football League. Let's quickly take you to the scoreboard and get you up to date. Only one of the early games is still in progress. The Saints beat the 49ers. 23-10 was the final score down in New Orleans. New England and Atlanta. Two minutes to go. The Patriots lead. Special teams have been the difference in this game. The Falcons have made mistakes with their special teams. Tampa Bay holds on against Buffalo. Jim Kelly comes out firing in the second half. Three touchdown passes but the Bucks win at 34-28. Miami over Houston. Dan Marino had the hot hand. The longest touchdown pass of the season. And it came to Mark Duper. Marino had already thrown eight yards to Clayton, 38 yards to Moore, three yards to Nathan, and then Duper busted free. 85 yards with the touchdown. And the Miami Dolphins win going away down in the Orange Bowl behind the passing arm of Danny Marino. The Pittsburgh Steelers come away with another win this afternoon. 26 7-3 over the Green Bay Packers. Cincinnati, they go to first because it's 24-17 and Cleveland comes right with them. In the AFC Central, the Browns win 24-9. Three touchdown passes by Bernie Kosar. The St. Louis Cardinals come back. Cliff Stout replaces Neil Lomax and Stout guides the Cardinals to a 13-10 victory. And of course, in the wild one that just finished, you heard Pat Summerall describe the field goal that missed 17-14 the Giants with the win. Now, how about the games that are underway? The big one in the L.A. Coliseum. The Raiders with an early field goal over the Broncos 3-0. Kansas City and San Diego down the coast. That's a safety. The Chargers lead it by two over the Chiefs. The Jets are out in Seattle and they have kicked an early field goal 3-0 over the Seahawks. Minnesota and Washington and the Redskins lead the Vikings 10-6. And the postgame show, sponsored by Miller Lite, continues in a moment. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, what would you say if you could make more out-of-state calls for the same amount of money? Uh -huh. Even during business hours? Well... Trained specialists, there when you need them. What if the company offering you all this was AT&T? That's a horse of a different color. The new AT&T Pro-America plan. 10% off for just $15 a month. And AT&T. Call 1-800-222-0400. AT&T. The right choice. Does Miller High Life come in a clear bottle just to stand out from the crowd? Or is there more to it than that? You see, Miller High Life is brewed dark and rich from this special and expensive roasted malt. How dark and rich? Compare Miller to the other leading premium and see the difference for yourself. When you brew a beer with all the quality and care that goes into Miller High Life, you put it in a clear bottle for the world to see. Because that's the American way. Exciting game over the Meadowlands. The Giants win and they move into first place all alone for the time being, I might add, in the NFC East. Here's how the game unfolded and we're going to go hear from Joe Moore shortly. With the linebackers watching, they were back in action soon and unfortunately for Danny White and the Cowboys, this may spell the end of the season for White, a fractured right wrist. That meant that Steve Pillar had to move in. He had not practiced or taken that many snaps during the week with the starting lineup, but immediately he got this touchdown pass to Mike Renfro and the Cowboys were ahead of the Giants by a score of 7-3, to three, and Bill Parcells extremely unhappy with that play. Then Irv Cross, the little big man, took over. The little big man blasting over from eight yards out, had the most productive rushing day against the Cowboys all year. And he wasn't finished. That was number one. Then let's go get the winner as he got through the middle of that line, and Joe Morris had a whale of an afternoon. Let's go back out to the Meadowlands, Irv, and uh, Pat Summerall and John Madden, I know, are standing by over there. They called the game, and... Uh, Pat, I'll tell you, it was a wonderful afternoon for the Giants, and what a day Joe Morris had. Very interesting afternoon, uh, Brent. I don't think that uh, 
in the last series when the Cowboys had the ball and were trying to drive the tie. I don't think I've ever seen a sequence like that where there was a penalty on every play. Six straight plays, was that what it was? Yeah, and the Cowboys would, would get down there and then they'd come back, then they'd have a penalty, then there'd be a penalty against the Giants and just went on and on. But I'll tell you, at the end there, that was great defense by the Giants. Oh, Axel George Martin particularly. And as you go back and look, uh, I hate to blow our own horn, but uh, as you look at what we said in the beginning of the game, the Giants felt they had to run. The Cowboys felt they had to throw. They did both, and the game wound up just like you would expect. Well, you know, the amazing thing was Joe Morris. I mean, they had to be looking for him. Here on Monday night against the Redskins, he gains 181 yards. You say, great day. You can't do that twice in a row. Then he comes back today, and again today, he gains 181 yards and two touchdowns. This guy's amazing. Dominant. I don't care what who <laughs> said. <laughs> Let's go back now to Brent Musburger. All right, Pat and John. Dominant indeed is the only word for Joe Morris. We'll check in on the Washington Redskins. They must win to stay even with the Giants as the NFL Today postgame show continues in a moment. I was one of the toughest drill instructors in the U.S. Marine Corps. I marched my men through mud, snow, and rain. And after I turned those cream puffs into Marines, I treated myself to the best beer in the U.S. of A. Miller Lite. Lights less filling. And this taste makes me proud to be an American. As for you guys out there who spent 10 of the toughest weeks of your lives with me, I got one thing to say. How come you don't write? We're proud to say there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Meet our family's newest member. Our new high-performance Tandy 1000 EX. PC compatible and now at an incredible $7.99. Including a Christmas bonus color monitor. We saved $300. And it came with deskmate software like word processing, budgeting, filing, and more. Of course, all work and no play. Makes a dull computer. <clears throat> right. The Tandy 1000 EX computer, just $7.99. Only at Radio Shack. Phew. Working on a tan is torture. How do I bear it? With a Sun Country wine cooler, naturally. Sun Country is the best tasting blend of premium wine and real fruit juice I've ever had. So while the heat's burning me up, the sun's cooling me down. Sun Country, say, give me the real juice cooler. So pick up a cold, refreshing Sun Country, because it can cool off. Even the hottest bodies on the beach. Well, the Washington-Minnesota game. The Redskins strike for 10 quick points, and then moments ago, the Vikings came back with a touchdown drive of their own. And we can see that with this win by the Giants, the Redskins must hold on against the Vikings here this afternoon to remain in a tie. Now, this was Ted Brown punching one in. And, Jimmy, what about the Vikings in their pursuit of the Chicago Bears? Can they overhaul the Bears by any miracle, or are they looking at a wild card in the NFC Central? The only chance they have is a wild card, my friend and nothing more after they lost to Cleveland last week. All right. Well, Jimmy, Joe Morris has joined us. He's with Pat Summerall and John Madden out in the middle line. So let's go back. Pat? Well, Joe Morris is standing by down on the sideline. It's been an incredible stretch of uh, six days, really, for him. 181 yards against the Redskins on Monday night, 181 this afternoon against the Cowboys. Joe, first of all, how does it feel to be the Giant offense? Well, Pat, I don't think I'm the Giant offense. I think that what we're trying to do with the ball is, you know, get me to run the ball and, you know, try to dominate people on the line of scrimmage. And uh, with our two tight end offense, we've been able to do that. 181 yards uh, two weeks in a row. Uh, how about stamina-wise? How about physically? How do you feel? Okay. Well, uh, Coach Parcell says last week I didn't take any uh, vicious blows to uh, slow me down at all, but I don't agree with that. But uh, I've been holding up pretty well, Pat. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me is uh, mentally, I've, I, I've, in my mind, said to myself, hey, I've got to make some big plays if we're going to win ball games." Hey, Joe, how about today? I know coaches always do that, say, ah, that wasn't tough. You know, the players had an easy day, but how was today physically? Well, uh, John, it was a very physical day today. Dallas plays a very good defense. Uh, you know, that flex defense, nobody plays it like they do, and nobody else is playing it. And uh, today they made a couple plays, and they really wrecked me up a little bit. I think Randy almost took my head off on the one I fumbled. All right, Joe, congratulations to you, and thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you very much, Pat and John. Back to Brent Musburger. All right, Pat, thank you. Eric Diggerson, look out. Here comes the big little man. We'll continue with the postgame show, sponsored by Miller Lite, in a moment. I've always been afraid of 
two things, flying and good camera. But with this Canon T70, I'm not afraid. This push button T70 is so easy to use, I can even get the tough shot. And now you can get a $25 rebate. Great shots at a great price. Nothing to fear. The Canon T70 is so advanced it makes the tough shots simple. I'm fearless now. Ooh. Now get a rebate up to $25 from Canon. Details at participating dealers. My amigo Juan just came out from Mexico. So I'm introducing him to my American friend Larry and our favorite beer, Miller Lite. Yeah, from Porfidor. Juan, me Miller Lite the gusto porque. It tastes muy bueno. Larry. Larry has me muscle calories and no gusto filioppo. El comprende? No, not really. <laughs> For mucho great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Does your friend speak any English? <laughs> Here at Hewlett Packard, we think long and hard about your business computing system and how it can help your people share more information and make better decisions. So before we talk hardware, we answer a lot of hard questions. At Hewlett Packard, we never stop asking, what if? They need a network package between sales and shipping. What if we took a new approach to the problem? The way I see it, All right, a quick scoring update. These are the finals that are in now. New Orleans runs its record to 4-5, and 23-10 over the 49ers. The 49ers dearly need Joe Montana back. New England over Atlanta, 25-17 for the Patriots. They could pick up a full game on the Jets today. Tampa Bay over Buffalo, down in Tampa, 34-28 the final. Miami behind Danny Marino's four scoring strikes, 28-7 over the Oilers. Pittsburgh runs its record to 3-6, and 27-3 over the hapless Packers. Cincinnati, 24 and and Detroit 17, the final. Cleveland 24, Indianapolis 9. The Browns and the Bengals stay tied in the AFC Central. St. Louis comes back in the second half to beat Buddy Ryan's Eagles 13-10. And the New York Giants hang on against the Dallas Cowboys 17-14. They go to first in the NFC East. These are games in progress. Now in the second quarter, the Raiders leading the Broncos by a field goal. In the second quarter, the Chargers lead over Kansas City by a safety. And the new coach down there is stressing defense today. Seattle's new quarterback, Gail Gilbert, a scoring pass against the Jets. They lead the Jets 7-3 in the second quarter. And Minnesota and Washington, it is 10-7. And the Vikings have just punched in the touchdown to go ahead of the Redskins. It is 13-10 right now. Vikings pending the extra point in that game. The Redskins have to come back. This is the action that unfolded moments ago down in RFK Stadium. After scoring on a one-yard burst, it was Tommy Gunn, Tommy Kramer, faking to the right, and he hit Lewis down the left side. He outran the secondary. The Vikings add the extra point. Now they're ahead of the Redskins. The Giants could wind up all alone in first place. A reminder, next Saturday at CBS, 2.30 Eastern time, you'll see either Stanford against UCLA or North Carolina taking on Clemson. That's 2.30 Eastern time on CBS. Then on Sunday, our coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern time. The big opening game of our doubleheader, you'll check in on the Chicago Bears against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that will be followed by either the Giants against Buddy Ryan's Philadelphia Eagles or the St. Louis Cardinals against the San Francisco 49ers, who must hit the comeback trail now. They will be digging uphill against the Rams. So for Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, and Will McDonough, I'm Brad Musburger. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. The NFL Today postgame show has been sponsored by Miller Lite, proud sponsor of NFL Lineman of the Year. There's only one light beer, 